<laughs> oh, all right, thank you, Tom Segura. They let Finally, him we find somebody <laughs> that can do this a good job. Oh, uh, but they let him out of his cave with his two bears. Actually, he's one of the bears. Hi, and how are you? Hey, welcome live to Austin, Texas, and this is the place to be, Circuit of the Americas. It's the longest track on the schedule, just over 3.4 miles as they work around. First road course of this season, and the weather outstanding. A little cloud cover, at least the drivers and the crews are liking it so far. And this event is uh, known for not just having outstanding cup drivers. We've got a mix of drivers from all over who've been successful in other places. Race day presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Our location, we're coming to you from the top of turn one where there's going to be a lot of action. And behind us, start finish line, we have some fans who have camped out to enjoy this road course. Nice to have you with us. NASCAR on Fox for the sixth race of the season. Oh, and the hey, sorry, so they're cheering. I think that might be for Boyer. They think he's leaving. No, hey, no. <laughs> that oh, means the cars are coming, Chris. <laughs> okay. We're in the way. All right, Clint Boyer, uh, Kurt Busch is with us. He'll be in the broadcast booth. And and Guther Steiner, who is the principal with Haas F1, you've also seen him on, on that show, Drive to Survive. And again, because we are live, you have to make sure, otherwise we don't want to beep you. All right, so you're going to be good? I promise. You, I promise. Be I will be a good guy today. Okay. You know, I will be good. We want you, you got to worry be, about we, me we, still, yeah. too, though. Yeah. <laughs> we want you to be, we want you to be candid, but we have to be slightly professional. <laughs> So now I turn to him, uh, and I say, what's excited you? You've been here all week. You've been in the garage, uh, practice this weekend. What are you excited most about for today? Well, you know, Gunther and I have both been talking about it. It's just this racetrack, such a cool racetrack, such a demanding racetrack. It was designed, honestly, for a different form of motorsports, and that's what makes the challenge so unique for our cup guys. Um, I love the storylines with these F1 guys moving over. You know, first thing they do is retire. You know where they want to come, Chris? Straight back to the old <laughs> cup series. Come check out the NASCAR. Our boys. So I'm glad that those guys are here. And then Taylor, um, uh, I think this is Jordan Taylor is going to be extremely fast, taking advantage of a great opportunity in the yeah, nine you car. You both heard a road course win in, in your career. Cup drive. What's it take to win here, to win on a road course like this one? I mean, just the excitement of Circuit of the Americas. That's why everybody's here with F1, MotoGP. I came here 10 years ago to do a driver swap with James Courtney with an Australian V8 supercar. I'm jacked up for this place. And what does it take to win? everything you got to survive these restarts you got to have smooth execution on pit road and you got to keep shiny side up and sometimes it's easier said than done a good driver is a good driver a good car is a good car what are the differences in formula one and in cup racing that we're going to see on display today or what will we notice most notice most i think no track limits for nascar except in the ss a little bit but otherwise in f1 you always is the track limits here you can use them to your advantage to go faster in cup you couldn't you couldn't even police it they couldn't find enough people to police it because these cars are more difficult to drive so I think that is uh, but I think that's pretty cool and as clean said you know all the guys after F1 they want to come over you know why they want to have fun right and that is part of the fun and the fans are having fun where it mentioned you already mentioned uh, Jordan Taylor let's take a look at some of the guys who aren't normally your cup drivers but have come from either uh, Formula One or from IMSA and have been very successful 2007 champ his second cup start, Kimi Raikkonen, Jensen Button, 2009 champ. This is his first cup race. Gunther working with him. And sports car champ Jordan Taylor, who Quint just mentioned a moment ago, he's in the nine car for Chase Elliott, who's still recovering. We wish him well. I think Chase is close to returning, but more on that later. And also a seven-time NASCAR champ, Jimmy Johnson. So give us a little overview on what you think the kind of racing will be. How much of an effect will the guys be who aren't the normal cup drivers? You just threw in, oh, yeah, by the way, there's a seven <laughs> Time champion of this sport, well, Jimmy he's, Johnson's in he's the race retired, too. by the way. But now <laughs> you know, he's back. Every view is this: you've got fast cars, you've got good drivers, you got world champions in this race. And man, I'm telling you, it's anybody's game. The strategy, the stage is going away. Those cautions and the breakup in this race is going to be a difference maker. The fuel mileage could come into it. You're going to go, sir. You boys in the pit area, you're going to have strategy. To, you got a lot of strategy, a lot of work to Bad, do. You got to be ready for the bumping and banging. This yeah. is NASCAR. Uh, uh, That's why uh, they're here for the fun. Exactly. That's what I think they like, a little bit bumping and banging. You cannot do that with an iPhone car. And obviously, bit strategy. I've got all these engineers uh, trying to make the best decision, but there are numbers. And these guys out there, you know, they have got... Uh 
feeling, you know, I call it feeling, you know, they know what they do and they know their opponents, what they will be doing. And so the strategy is numbers, but here could be anything. A, a yellow comes out or a safety car and uh, everything is turned around again. Now you say feeling, you mean that feeling in that race car, because you better check the feelings at the <laughs> gate when you walk through this deal. Let's take a look at uh, what the odds makers think of long shots favorites uh, for this race, including those that we have already discussed. So in the logs, look at Joey Legato, who's a defending champ. I mentioned he only had one road course uh, victory. Look at the names the, in this. Yeah, like Keselowski, who's, who's never won a road course for Kurt, champ. Who's your long shot? My Denny Hamlin, my boss. I'm going to get some brownie points oh. out here. I'm taking him plus 2,000 right there. Bang. What do you got, Gunther? I, I got I got Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson, you know, I think seven-time champion. Uh, and then he just he did a lot of uh, uh, single seater racing. All right, uh, now the favorites. the favorites. Who are you liking there, Gunther? Uh, my, my my brain says Tyler Reddick, but my heart says AJ Almendinger. Uh, he won yesterday, and I know AJ pretty well, and he can do it. Well, my wallet's going to tell you Tyler Reddick's going to win the race today. <laughs> Tyler, I, I got to go with that guy named Bush. I'll go there with you that go. guy named Bush. Uh, brother, brother yeah. to brother. Hey, real real quick, uh, what about a cup driver going into F1? How would they handle that? Would they enjoy that? Would they be good at it? I, I think for sure. You, you need to ask them, but I think nobody would say no to that one, uh, pick me, pick uh, making me. that happen. Jimmy did that, and uh, he enjoyed it. I spoke with him. Uh, it was a good day for him. William Byron, the only two-time winner, multiple winner this season. He's your pulse hitter as we continue live from Austin, Texas. You're on the scene. We're on the scene to bring you closer to it. We are rolling right along here on race day. Joey Logano took home the win in Atlanta, something he's dreamed of doing since he was nine years old. Adam Alexander digs into why this is a full circle moment for Logano and his family. Then things take a hard turn when our wild card, Michael Waltrip, hits the grid walk. All that and more as we keep Austin weird right here on Fox. Check this out, Mike. Echo Park Automotive, every car, happy owner, huh? I tell you what, Echo Park made me happy. Listen to what I did. I went to echopark.com, I entered my VIN number, answered a couple of simple questions, drove over to Echo Park, they made me an offer, and I took it. Bam! That easy? Right on the spot, they wrote me a check. This was your car? This one. You're watching Race Day on Fox from Austin, Texas. The pre-race show, Race Day, is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Perfect time to check on the Coke family of drivers. Daniel Suarez got his first career win. That was in Sonoma on a road course. Denny Hamlin, Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon will give his first road course win. Joey Logano has a road course win. Last week's winner. And we're more on him. Let's go over to Adam Alexander. Chris, last week in Atlanta, it was the Joe Lowe Show. Joey Logano leading the most laps in the race after starting from the pole and picking up his first win of the year. You know, he turns 33 in a couple of months. He's got 32 career wins, two championships. But what happened last Sunday, it rates right near the top. He told me all about it when we talked this week. Joey, as we all know, your hometown is Middletown, Connecticut, but your racing foundation was laid in Atlanta. So what was the significance of that win on Sunday? It was special just because of the memories that were built there. There's a condo right off of turn four, and we lived in one of those for three or four years, me and my dad, racing this thing in bandoleros, and just kind of came full circle. It was really neat. Feels good to be me. So many memories gritting over there at the Legends car and racing and dreaming of going straight at the quarter mile and going out to the big track to finally win here means so much to me. It's hard to beat a Daytona 500 or winning a championship, but the amount of time I spent in Atlanta and the memories that were made there for my family, this one sits up there pretty high. Logano's only nine years old, and if he can hold on for two laps, he's going to win this thing. The best part and about so, this is the announcer. He, he kept calling you the little man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't as good as Sunday. Not as way. good. <laughs> I think the reaction of like, wait a second, who is it? Oh, it's dad. <laughs> yeah. You've been on both sides of this, celebrating with your dad, but also celebrating with your own kids. What's the balance of all of that? 
I mean, it's different, but the one thing that's the same is that just the memories that you make with your family are really the best part about winning. It's way cooler than trophies. The motto for the year is never enough. Yeah, the never enough thing all, all stems from Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford. I sat in his office after he won the championship, and the first thing he said to us was, well, next year probably won't be as good. And I left there fired up. Like, I was fired up. I was pissed. I made these hats. I sent them a picture of the hat. I said, I'll send you a hat with some trophies. You've done so many great things at 32 years old. How do you continue to re motivate yourself we love to win like that part's great but i think it's the hate to lose so much that keeps us going you know i went to cup and how many years i was not good and i lost my job i don't forget that feeling and i'm glad it happened now right it's never happened to me before that i was in these things but i needed that in my career to be successful today It's always great to catch up with Joey Logano. Of course, he's the reigning champ. He won last week in Atlanta. But as he said in the piece, never enough. He starts 15th today. Chris going for his second career win on a road course in the Cup Series. Thanks very much, Adam. This is more than a race. It's really become a happening. All kinds of celebrities. Uh, Brandon Hunt is here as an honorary starter, the co-creator of Ted Lasso. And Darius Rucker, you heard his concert playing behind us when we were on earlier. Also did a little Hootie of the Blowfish throwback. Always, that was nice. Always. We, we, Got to go back to old school. Yeah, we love that. Yeah, yeah, you know it. We go back a, a long way. We it's go back a long way. Nice to see you here. Uh, well, You've you. been at a lot of races. I know you do events in and around with a lot of the NASCAR fans. What do you like about this place and this one in particular? I love it. The crowd was great. Yeah. They were there, they wanted to hear great music, and I always say every time I get called by NASCAR to do a race, I say, yeah, because it's a built-in crowd, man. You get to play for a bunch of people, and it was, it, I mean, like every race, it's awesome. Speaking of racing, you've been around a long time. You've yeah. been to a lot of races. Michael Waltrip and your buddies, I just saw Jeff Gordon walk by. Yeah. He grabbed you like you guys are best pals. <laughs> These new kids, which one impresses you the most? Oh, goodness, what a great question. You know, for, it's the new kids, you, you're still watching the guys. For me, you're still watching the guys that are winning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like got Logano and those guys. Like, those are the guys because the new kids are coming up and they want to do something. But I'm still, I'm a, I'm. I'm a winner guy. Stick with the veterans. <laughs> That's what I love you guys. Stick with you the veterans. You know what I mean? I'm a winner. So like, and like for me, Jimmy being back in the car. Yeah, I'm like, I'm cool. like, don't run eight races. Run this damn season, man. Yeah. Let's go win this thing. Yeah, it's awesome. Jimmy Johnson. All right, we got, I, know we got, I wish we had more time. Uh, fires don't start themselves. Yes. The latest hit out, what, yep. March 31st? It's out March 31st, absolutely. All right, uh, three-time Grammy winner. I once was a presenter for the Golden Mike Awards, but we'll talk about that later. Good <laughs> to see you here as always. Great Enjoy the racing yeah. and take care, Darius. Thank All you. Right. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm Darius Rucker with us and the Super Six. You love for people to win that money, All right? You got to scan oh, the QR code and Darius, cash in. I give away my own money. That's how much I love these fans <laughs> you talk about. Get on that free to play Super Six app. Come and get your picks in. Win my money. Come and get it. All right, scan that QR code. You got a chance to win. Download the app. Make your picks for today's race. Ross Chastain will be joining us live from the grid. That's where we move to. And then Michael is going to find the grid and he'll walk. That's his job. That's what he does. Thanks for staying with us. We're live in Austin. Awesome racetrack. What a view, Ross. Long ways down, buddy. I think you can see San Antonio over there. I'll tell you what would be awesome. One of your watermelon smashes from here. That's Off of what here? Yes. I don't, Ross, I don't know, man. Ross. This is hot. Ross. I spent 100 days working on this watermelon, growing it. Please take care of it. What he didn't know, Ross, is it was a purpose for this. Let's go, oh, buddy. Yeah. Come on. Do it, Ross. Do it. What NASCAR drivers do when they have time, that's the uh, Coda Tower here at the Circuit of the Americas in Austin. 250 feet high. It's about 
50 feet less than the Statue of Liberty. And that's where that watermelon came from at Ross Chastain. Last year's winner of this race is with us, with Clint Kurt. And we did find uh, Brandon Hunt, the uh, creator. Nice to see you. Enjoying the race? Uh, yes, very much so, Chris. Thank you for having me. Uh, the race scene. I want to get more on uh, the show at Ted Lasso. <laughs> and I want to see if you can work on a NASCAR version of that for us with crew chiefs. I'm accepting all pitches. Okay. He's got money over here after big wins, so nice to see you. Hey, how about the watermelon drop? What was that all about? I know you're an eighth generation for those aren't aware. Uh, watermelon farmer, but yep. uh, that's something you don't do on the farm. No, no, sir. We don't have any towers like that out there. And, and for Mr. Pockers, for Bob, to grow that watermelon for 100 days in Central Park, it was an honor to smash it in celebration of last year's win. I think there's still pizzas out here somewhere <laughs> in the parking lot. Blue everywhere. I thought it was awesome, Ross. Well, it was idea. your idea, so. Yeah. I loved it. Was. Oh, 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 no. Oh, I we have a 250-foot tower. He's a watermelon guy. Seemed fitting to me. What the heck? You, last year, the wild finish, and it was it was called afterwards, of course, an important win for you, but life life changing. You continue this year just reflecting on that and maybe what, what kind of memories or thoughts you'll have trying to win this race. Yeah, well, I think both these guys can attest to it. The first win, there's nothing like it, and I got to experience that, and it made everything worth it. That's what I put on the inside of the ring that Justin Marks got for the entire track house staff, everybody that works there, and it just made it all worth it, and it was. It's career-defining, life-changing and something that I'll never be able to win my first cup race again. And especially the way it was, the way it went down. I mean, one of the wildest finishes we've ever seen on a road course. You know, three cars going forward, one in, one came out on top, and that was you, Ross. Very impressive. But how about today? You know, moving forward, how do you repeat that? Uh, well, the preparation, it starts with, with GM and Chevrolet and the simulator work we've done, the tire work they've done with Kyle and the aid at the tire test. And then a new downforce package, trying to gra grab our hands around that from the short tracks to road courses and try to keep up with Daniel. Suarez, I think, oh. is one of the best drivers in the field on road courses. And then I got an F1 world champion as a teammate as well with Project 91 Akimi. The only thing I think you really have to do is you just have to believe. Right, Coach? That's all I you got to do. believe, baby. Just got to believe. <laughs> Coach Beard, yes. But, and by the way, uh, Clint always has the memory of a, of a goldfish. But interpret real quick, you know, downforce <laughs> simulation. Is that funny to you? Um, I had a downforce simulation uh, once at Burning Man. Um, <laughs> well, we don't have to, we don't have time, <laughs> but we are going to do put it out, which is like a hot segment that Kurt likes to do. He takes some of the craziest plays from NASCAR. So hang around. How about bud. this one, Coach? We have a little something called put it out. Put you it know out. what that means? 1965 at Riverside, going back to 75 years ago. AJ Foyt breaks go out into the last corner, flips end over end, breaks his back. Four months later, A.J. Ford, the man himself, came and sat on the pole at Daytona 500. Put it out. Put it out. <laughs> You're fitting right in. Here's one that happened right here just yesterday. Zane Smith wins the race. Heck of a burnout. Uh-oh, coach. We're on fire. Get out. How about that? Put it out. That is a put it out. Literally put the fire out. All right, there, there's, there's your burning man, all right, uh, Coach Beard. Hey, thanks for coming by. Enjoy the race. All right, and keep up me. the great work. Thank you. All right, Emmy, you Emmy Award winner, Ted Lasso. We want that We want that NASCAR version. You got a race to run. Good luck. These guys will go up to the booth, have a lot of fun, and Gunther will be joining You're you favorite, as well. Your favorite, Ross. I'm all telling right. you. Right. Go after it. We got we'll you try. Watching you and Tyler Reddick. And right now, so look at the great scene here. The weather's heating up a little bit. Sun's coming out. Let's check with Michael Waltrip. He's there for the grid walk. Oh, right. yes, he is, and I hope I don't have a put it out moment. Denny Hamlin, I got confused for a second. You look a lot like Kyle Busch in this rig. Only nicer, yes. Yeah. How do you feel about your chances <laughs> today? Uh, I don't feel that great about it, but we're going to we're going to march to the front, towards the front. Uh, take the Formula One world champion with you. Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a word with Kimi Raikkonen. Hey, Kimi, it's Michael Waltrip with the Fox Gridwalk. Uh, do you mind if I uh, interrupt and ask you a couple questions? Yeah. That was one, right? Uh, yeah, I figured that. Uh, how, how does it feel being here at Coda in these NASCAR cars? Um, no, it feels good. I mean, it's different, but uh, that's what we expect. So we'll try to do the best that we can. Thanks for spending some time with us. Well, he was polite, wasn't he? Let's see what uh, Jensen's up to. Hey, buddy. Walter here for the NASCAR grid walk. We got a kid in the car getting the baby out. Oh, so precious. What's your name? 
Lenny. This Lenny. is our daughter, Lenny. Uh, you're a pleasant person. I like seeing your smile and seeing how much fun you're having doing the NASCAR thing. Thank you, man. No, it's uh, it's been pretty special the last few days. So, yeah, looking forward to my first NASCAR race. Um, and this is going to be manic. But, no, exciting times ahead. It's great to have the family here as well. That means a lot. H have you ever run into anybody in a racing vehicle on purpose? On purpose, only in rallycross once, but uh, no, this is going to be a shock, and I'm, I'm not going to do it on purpose, but I'm sure it's going to happen. Man, the grid walk is over. This is a great day in Austin, Texas, and when we come back, we're going to get to the pre-race ceremonies. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering the race from the green flag to the checkered flag. Every mile in between is also covered. Goodyear, more driven. There's a saying around these parts that you've probably heard before. If you haven't heard it, you've for sure seen it. And this weekend, it's all on NASCAR to keep the weirdness alive and well. It is a place where weird is a compliment. We wear it like a badge of honor. There's a lot of things folks can call us. One thing they can't call us is boring. Here it comes. That Power was move. Strong move. And Ross Chastain to the checkered flag. NASCAR, you've always been weird in your own way. From the boulevard of Talladega to your celebrations. But Austin is unlike any other city. And Coda is unlike any other track. Get out of here, bud. Get out of here. And because of that, two F1 champions, legends from overseas, are about to hop behind the wheel to compete against America's best drivers. And a goat. We have to. Sounds pretty weird, right? going to be some weird, wild, wacky stuff here. Third year of the NASCAR, the Cup Series, is here at the Circuit of the Americas, and you are here live on Fox, now opening ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please rise as you are able and remove your hats as the Austin-Travis County Emergency Medical Services Honor Guard presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as television anchor and co-host of Sports Center on ESPN, Sage Steele, offers today's invocation. Strong and faithful God, as we come together for today's race, we ask that you bless everyone in attendance. The drivers, their crews, the teams, the first responders, the military personnel, we ask that you keep everyone safe from harm. For the drivers, please God instill in them respect for each other and reward them for their perseverance. For the fans, thousands of fans who've come from so far away to cheer for their favorite athletes, we ask you God to give them a beautiful day here at the track with each other, friends and family. And remember to always lead with kindness. And finally, Lord, we ask you to bless us. This is such a gift to be here together to celebrate the great sport of NASCAR in the great state of Texas, in the greatest country on this planet, United States of America. Amen. Here to perform the national anthem from Apple TV Plus's Schmigadoon, whose second season premieres on April 5th, award-winning actor and NASCAR enthusiast, Jaime Camille. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the starlight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched 
were so gallantly streaming in the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave Ready to roll in Texas. The drivers are ready. After the flyover, the race will go on Fox. Thanks for being a part of it. Enjoy the race, everybody. NASCAR Race Up, weeknights on FS1. Just outside Austin, Texas, Fox Sports welcomes you to the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix from the Circuit of the Americas. All of the pre-race festivities pretty well dispensed with. Now we're ready to race. And if you remember last year and this great three-driver battle for the win in the closing lap decided when Ross Chastain gave the bump to A.J. Allmendinger, he went spinning. And Chastain drove into history with his first ever NASCAR Cup win. And he celebrated watermelon style. <laughs> well, what could top that? Well, we're going to have 68 laps to find out. Hi, everybody. Mike Joy, along with uh, Clint Boyer and Kurt Busch, both road course winners uh, in NASCAR. And Gunter Steiner, the team principal of Haas Formula One, joins us to put an international flavor to this. Clint, big picture. What a day and what a field. Well, big pictures, a big racetrack, 20 turns around this racetrack, unbelievable down here in Austin, Texas, the field, oh my gosh, do we have a field, two world champion F1 drivers in this field, Jordan Taylor's filling in for Chase, uh, Chase Elliott in a nine car, let me tell you, that baby is fast, on rails, a lot of story, that seven time champion Jimmy Johnson's back in the cup series, but I think all eyes are on the front of that pack, 24 car, the 40, uh, 45, Tyler Reddick and William Byron, pretty fast out there. Well, Kurt, you're the first guest analyst in the Fox booth who has raced this car with success. Give us a first-hand view of how today will play out. Yeah, this car is a lot of fun with the braking zones, the sequential shifter, and just the overall feel of a car like this, the way it was designed, it's meant for these road courses. So now with six road courses on the schedule, this one kicks it off. And the way that you got to navigate the corners, the sticker tires are just fine. Low downforce is really going to expose how much these cars are going to be slip sliding around because the low drag and the tire drop off is going to be big time today. So that's what you got to manage is the first fire off and the restart and then the long run speed. So, Gunter, we have IndyCar, Formula One, and IMSA drivers in this field and a lot of their fans in the grandstand. What's the appeal worldwide of coming here to race NASCAR? I think for a race car driver coming to drive one of these cars where he can have fun but still compete is something every race car, uh, race car driver in the moment in the world wants to do, you know, and uh, they are always welcomed by the, by the spectators, by the fans. So, uh, you know, in Austin, Texas, on this racetrack, they love it to come here. And when the opportunity arises, they just get it, you know. So uh, it's good to have them here. Well, guys, there's a lot of, obviously a lot of downforce over on the F1 side, but these cup drivers, man, we, Kurt and I were just out there in pre-race. Immediately, cloud cover went away, bright sunshine, very hot outside. This baby's going to be slick, and these guys are going to have their hands full right off the bat. And this race will have a different complexion from what you're used to. Because you could pit here without losing a lap, there will be no breaks at the end of the two stages. The race will run continuous start to finish, and that will certainly have an effect on strategy. Will this be a two-stop or a three-stop race? Each team has their own agenda, and we'll see how it plays out on this beautiful 3.4-mile, 20-turn road race course. Let's go trackside. 
here to say the most famous words in motorsports. You know him and love him as Coach Beard from Apple TV Plus's Ted Lasso, actor, writer, producer, Brendan Hunt. Austin, let's get weird. Coda, let's go. We're doing over 210 on a super speedway. How'd we get here? 75 years of progress, of twisted metal and clashes of will, all with one thing in mind. Get out front here they come and, and stay there. Side by side. Because out there is where the future is. NASCAR, always forward. Racing is back in the Lone Star State. Back here at Circuit of the Americas. Things are about to get a little weird in Austin, Texas. Hey, remember, uh, this car's got one extra gear today. Now, this isn't your typical racetrack. All the dimensions may have changed. The desire to win is still the same. That Power move. Strong move. Some can handle it, and well... Trouble in turn 13. Oh, oh no! Some can't. Rick and big, One thing is for sure. There's no shortage of drivers. Ready and waiting to say howdy. This is intense over here. NASCAR's Cup Series at the Circuit of the Americas is next on Fox. Well, Circuit of the Americas is only weird if you've spent your whole racing career turning left. This is a track of a different color and certainly of different corners. Let's take a tour. Here it is, Calamity Hill right off the bat. Man, I'm telling you, item number one, turn one up the steep hill, 130 feet up the hill, and things get tight. Look at this, funnel four, five, six wide, boom. We're gonna be in a wreck. We've seen it time and time again, right there in front of you. Gotta get through turn one if you're gonna be good on the rest of this racetrack. Yeah, once you clear Log Jam City, this is a tough part of the track. Three, four, five, six, these are the S's, and then this is where you really wanna try to get things set up. But fun, fun racetrack right now with third gear down into second. That's turn four to the right, don't touch that blue. Turn five, back to the left, and then six is one of the most important corners to get it tucked back to the right. And then you've got seven, eight, that sets you up for nine, which I think is the most important corner on this track to get a launch and carry your speed through 10. And it's the fastest corner down into 11. And a dive bomb zone. This is a passing zone. One of the first ones on this racetrack. Big opportunity for these guys, but you have to be careful. Yeah, the reason it is you have to arc that corner out to get a hold of this long straightaway. Get your car pointing the throttle down. But a big opportunity on a, a two different conversations because it sets up this mighty turn 12, Kurt. Yeah, turn 12 is another big overtaking zone than the stadium section, 13, 14, 15. That leads to the carousel of 16, 17, and 18. Long right-hander that chews up left rear tires, but it sets it up for the awesomeness that we've seen in 19 and 20. Absolutely, saw it last year's finish. You know, you, you gotta be careful. Don't, don't use it too quick. Um, you know, Almendinger moved him out of the way and Reddit came right back and, and uh, or excuse me, Chastain came right back and repaid the favor back there in 19 and 20, just like you said, drove off for the win. Pretty cool racetrack. Well, the hottest driver of this season so far won the pole here yesterday. Here's Jamie Little. Well, William Byron certainly turned some heads this weekend with the speed that you had. You're on the pole here. How much personal preparation have you put into your racecraft when it comes to road course racing? Yeah, I think it's just kind of been a slow evolution. I think, um, yeah, I didn't start in this kind of racing. I started racing late in general, but started 
mainly on ovals. And so uh, road course racing has been kind of a, a slow process to learn, but um, been fortunate enough to get a few poles on road courses. So it's just a matter of kind of putting it all together in the race, which I think I think we can do today. Our car feels feels great. So yesterday was a fun battle with AJ. That was uh, that was really exciting. Um, you know, stinks to finish second always. So that fire kind of burns for today. And I think uh, I think this Liberty University Chevy can uh, can stay up towards the front with Tyler and. Um, you know, I think Jordan will be fast, so it's going to be a fun race. William Byron looking for his first road course victory in the Cup Series. Mike? Thanks, Jamie. William Byron before he climbed aboard his number 24. Now, out there leading the field, Michael Waltrip, along with the winner of the Echo Park Automotive Pace, the Pace Car Contest, uh, winner Karen Thomas. Michael? Woo! Mike! This is awesome. The race cars are right behind us, Karen. Echo Park Automotive has given you a chance to pace the pace car. You won the fast face contest. How's it feel, darling? Oh, my gosh. It's so awesome. Man, I'm having so much fun. Mike, you can go to echopark.com right now and win my buy my car. I sold a car to Echo Park, and it's online right now. You can purchase it and Karen and I are hopping some curbs let me just tell you what I'm seeing out here folks lining this racetrack three and a half miles everywhere so much fun watch this I'm gonna get on the inside of this guy what a move that was that's how you get it done you get a, a real real wide entry and then you cut it down low on the exit that's how you uh, make a pass here and I'm gonna get these two hey Mike by the way did Richard Petty get in any trouble for staying on the track when he wasn't supposed to when he was doing the pace car ride uh, you mean at Darlington yeah, yeah I was gonna remind you Michael be sure to pull in before they give one to go and Rhythm don't forget that's her car that she won do not tear that thing up be easy on them tires <laughs> All right, here's today's Echo Park Automotive starting grid. William Byron, only driver to win poles on four different road courses in the Cup Series. Tyler Reddick, fastest in practice, won twice on road courses last year, a Chevy Toyota front row. Austin Sindrick led a lot here in the rain two years ago, always a contender on the road course. And Jordan Taylor, the four-time IMSA champion, sitting in for Chase Elliott, who will join us later in today's telecast. Daniel Suarez, winner at Sonoma last year. Alex Bowman, runner-up in this race last year. Boy, the talent is stacked to the front. A.J. Allmendinger used a bump and thump to take the lead yesterday and win the Xfinity Series race. Eric Jones, fastest in round one of qualifying, finished ninth here last year. Kyle Busch is a four-time NASCAR Cup road race winner. And Noah Gregson makes his best road, cake, great road course start. Now... Here are the road racing ringers, Jordan Taylor from IMSA, world driving champions, Kimi Raikkonen, and Jensen Button, and IndyCar star Connor Daly, and where they will start today. Jordan Taylor's had a lot of success here. This is 2017. He and brother Ricky teamed in their dad, Wayne Taylor's Cadillac Daytona prototype to win here at Coda, the fourth of their five season opening wins, including uh, the Rolex 24 at Daytona with Jeff Gordon. Hey, Jordan Taylor, how about you sporting the boys up in the Fox booth? You got us? Had a little bit of stagger there, Jordan. You got us up here? It's like talking to you, Kurt. <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> not uh, not very good. Let's we're gonna come back and try it when he gets on around here. Hey, that's one thing that everybody needs to know about this place. Long racetrack, that can happen out there. All right, we'll try him in a little bit. Folks, don't forget, you got a chance to win $10,000 of Clint's cash for free on the Fox Bet Super 6 today. Download the free app on your phone now. Enter your six predictions for today's race. Download Fox Bet Super 6 and play for free. This is going to be a good one this weekend. A lot of good picks right there. A lot of interesting things. Put them picks in. It's going to be fun. And let's get some late breaking stories, beginning with Jamie Little. Well, Mike Bubba Wallace in this 2311 team has shown a lot of promise here this weekend. He qualified 11th. I talked to his crew chief, Booty Barker, this morning, and he told me when it comes to road course racing, Bubba has been all in, trying to hone his crafts here. He's been engaged, been in the shop more than ever before. He really believes he can do it, but his best asset has been his teammate, Tyler Reddick. They have the exact same setup. He's been leaning on Tyler. Now he just needs to focus on being there at the end after these long runs. Regan Smith? Well, Jamie, 
every time we come to the uh, to the road course races, a driver you have to watch is A.J. Allmendinger. He's got two Cup Series wins already in his career, both on road courses, 11 Xfinity Series wins, including yesterday where he had a great run through the field towards the end of the race. The team told me the biggest asset that they have is A.J. in the car. He is like a data system. He knows so much of what he wants in that race car. They plan to lean on that asset today, and they start in seventh. Keep an eye on him. Larry Mack? Yeah, Regan, Mike Joy touched on it. Stage racing. For the first time, we're not going to throw the caution at the end of the stages, but they're still going to award those precious stage points. Stage one ends at lap 15, stage two at lap 30. Now, this is a 68 lap race with 22 to 23 laps being the fuel window. Easy peasy, two stops, but tire fall off is so great. A lot of crew chiefs are contemplating three stops. I talked to Jeremy Bullins, Austin Sinders crew chief. He said, I'll make that decision at lap 15. Mike, if you guys need me, holler, but I'm going to be a little busy. <laughs> Your calculator be smoking. Let's uh, see if we can raise Tyler Reddick. Hey, Tyler Reddick, this is Kurt Busch in the Fox booth. You got us, bud? Yes, sir. Got you guys. All right, so what's your game plan, my friend? You're going to lead every lap, or are you going to follow Billy Scott's uh, pitch strategy? What's uh, what's 2311 thinking today? You're breaking up there, Kurt. I couldn't hear what you said. Sorry. All right, what's your strategy for today? You're going to lead every lap, or are you going to follow Billy Scott's rules? <laughs> I don't know Billy Scott's rules. We haven't gotten there, uh, I guess. But, um, yeah, we'd like to lead. Obviously, we'll just see how the start goes. Me and William, uh, I've definitely earned a lot of track position, so we're going to try to take advantage of that. Uh, but yeah, just have a smooth, clean race. It's all going to be about managing uh, you know, time loss over the run. And yeah, hopefully we can just execute, and uh, we'll see where it goes as this race unfolds. All right, my friend, best of luck. Manage those tires. Get the job done today for us at Monster Energy. Yeah, buddy. I'll do my best for you. Well, not only could Jordan Taylor, um, uh, we couldn't hear him, neither can his team. Problem with the uh, in-car radio. Yeah, a lot of times, again, on a track this big, this is double, you know, 20 turns in this corner. You know, what, we have 11 at Sonoma. Um, with all these corners and all these cars grouped up together as tight as they are, it makes it difficult until they get spread out. Here are the gear changes around this course, and there are plenty of them. Yeah, tons of shifts, over 20 per lap. Sometimes if you get bogged down and into a little log jam, you got to downshift an extra gear. And it's just about keeping your momentum up on the big straightaways, of course. And then there's the technical section right through here. This is sometimes first, sometimes second, just matters what your tire wear feels like. Well, one of the things, you know, that's in a perfect lap to get all the speed out of the car. You heard Larry talk about the stages. We're not going to throw that caution. So fuel mileage could come into play here today. That's the reason you made that call, right? To take those stages away. Could be see some guys doing some interesting things with the old throttle pedal and that gear shifter. Well, it started out a little gloomy here. In fact, there was a sprinkle about three hours before uh, race time that sent everybody scrambling, but it's now 78 degrees. Winds out of the southeast at five, and uh, the sun is poking through. Michael McDowell goes to the rear. They had uh, splitter damage when he spun off during qualifying. Number of teams changed brake rotors. They noticed cracking after practice and qualifying. NASCAR considered that uh, a safety change, and so that was an approved change. Five sets of tires, including those you qualified with. There's Mc McDowell going to the back, and... Uh, Ryan Blaney rolling off uh, at the back of the field as well. Checking that pit road speed, Kurt, so important. You heard us talking about it. No cautions right there with the stage breaks. You make a mistake on pit road, that could be the end of your day. Yeah, it's always good to be disciplined everywhere you go, but the road courses, yeah, there's a little bit of leeway because the lap time is so long. You don't have to push lights, but you're always getting grades, and when the crew chief says, hey, uh, you weren't that good on pit road, you don't want to get that B- minus as a grade. Our Fox driver's eye camera with Martin Truex Jr. They did a beautiful job paving this track. It is really smooth. Uh, those red rumble strips, they are really not. And that's where drivers spend a lot of their time, it seems. Well, the other thing, we have ride limiters on these cars, the rub blocks, if you will, underneath of them. And they heck, uh, you know, hang up on those, those curves that you're talking about and really bottom out the car, can throw it around, especially on low air early. 
Yeah, there's one big bump that's after turn nine, and that's where you're trying to put the power down in second gear, and we'll have nice slow-mos and zoom-ins of that. But otherwise, yes, the track's gorgeous, has tons of room to roam and, and slide and not get stuck in the gravel trap. So a very generous racetrack as far as how it was designed, how it was built. <laughs> Generous, he says, Gunther. How about that? How about these drivers? You think they're going to be generous on each other? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think, you know, how it is. I mean, uh, uh, part of your result is how, how, how you can get to the front. And if you have to push something out of the way, you maybe need to do it. What I was thinking a little bit, will somebody, will somebody uh, be trying to manage the tires to have left more at the end, you know? That's to right. attack more, could be. I don't know. That's for you drivers to say if that is a possibility. <laughs> oh, it's definitely a possibility. <laughs> All right, we'll listen in on William Byron and company. We'll do the best we can for you here. We know you can do the best out there for us, and uh, we'll take what it gives us. Good luck out there. Ten four. Thank you, guys. Here in car. We'll go execute and uh, get a win. Brian Campy, interim crew chief. Henrik Motorsports has had great success on NASCAR's road courses. 26 wins, 24 poles. Most I'd by any team. I'd buy a lot. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Probably it double is, of the next group. And I want to brag on that kid in that 24 car. William Byron has been lights out this year. You know, we all talk about Larson, the speed that Kyle has, the champion uh, driver that he is. But, man, they've had two horse battles so far, and, and William has been the benefactor of both of those. So, um, you know, Hendrick and then Alex Bowman. You saw the ending of, of last year. You can't forget about him. And this nine car, I'm telling you, Jordan Taylor, I didn't get a chance to talk to him. I was going to brag on him a little bit. He's He may be my favorite for today. Oh, yeah, and then there's that other guy, Larson, that's part of the stable. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it. This is one of the big shows in NASCAR. Here they come to the front straightaway. 35 NASCAR Cup regulars, four road course winner, uh, ringers. Under Let green. Slow. Let him pretty slow, Kurt. That was a slow start. We'll see. We're going to see four or five wide log jam city. Here we go. That looked quite orderly. It was very simple. All things considered. Four wide. That was just a first start. <laughs> Long race to go. Now, no guarantees we will have restarts today. This race could go green all the way to the checker. Not likely, but possible. That's a good point, Mike. I mean, that's that's weighing heavily on all these teams, engineers, drivers, everybody. So tight right through there, trying to get things sorted out. And here you comes Cindric. Get that spot up. Cindric on the outside, trying to take second from Reddick. Remember when he dominated in the rain here two years ago? The There's that the jump, jump you were talking about. Yeah, Reddick didn't quite get the best turn one, and he's still trying to reel back, and he might have to settle into third. He's going to throw it in there. We'll, well see. Cindric ran him wide, and I don't think he liked it. He dove back down to the inside, took that position away. And there they go. They're all the way down that long back straightaway. Going to be grabbing fifth gear, 175 miles per hour down into turn 12. My money's on uh, the 45 here at Albregum. Off of a 40-mile-an-hour corner, mind you. Full send right here. Send it in there. Well, and look at Suarez. Look what it does for him. Those two need to sort that out pretty quick, or else he's going to get a two for one. Seen that many times on that corner. I think that was generous of Cendric to kind of yield and get settled in here. Smart. This is that tight stadium section. Man, oh. Suarez dove it in yeah, there. Took it, that spot. It? Door slammed Cendric. <laughs> Almost spun out Reddick in doing so. And that happens sometimes where that, that car that's not even expecting anything because the two behind them are racing so hard, you end up getting clobbered from two cars back. Cool corner, though. It, it opens that you have to get that wide entrance, but it opens the door up for somebody to take it. And that's exactly what Suarez did. Cindric coming right back on the inside. That's the preferred line right there at turn 20. Yeah, that's some great racing. Positioning back, going back again, and then having some crossovers. Clean air is so important. That's why these drivers are fighting tooth and nail for those early positions. Huge dive bomb. Noah Gregson up two spots on the first lap. Kyle Larson up three. That was Almendinger. Really dove it in. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Keselowski. Caution. 
Well, here it is. Didn't know if it was going to happen. Sure enough. And Jimmy Johnson in the pit lane. Right rear down on him. Multiple contact between turn 19 and 20. Puts us under caution after lap one. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Ford. Built for America. Caution completing lap number one. It looked yeah, like Chris Buescher may have spun uh, right into the path of... Jimmy Johnson, Ty Dillon, Brad Kozlowski. Yeah, definitely done for the day for Ty Dillon. Heavy front end damage into the 48. Questionable there. 48, 84. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to catch you there. But yeah, this is uh, the carousel, and now we're diving down into 19, where we've seen most of the contact from all these guys. Again, yep. Johnson's on the inside. He's kind of minding his own business. He's, he goes way left. 17 moves Boom. over to avoid the car spinning, gets into Ty Dillon in 77, into Jimmy Johnson in 84. Their days are definitely done. Yeah, that was a hard hit for the 84. It's a six, Brad Keselowski spinning. And I'm sure the six didn't just spin by himself. I'm That's sure right. he was assisted in some All right, way. Keselowski was able to continue. Well, he got assist, but it yep. was off of the, that was them lowering blocks I was talking about, limiter, ride limiters. That thing will bottom out, take you for a ride. Might have bottomed out on Gunther's uh, carbon fiber parts. Jimmy Johnson on pit road, under repair. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express Card. And by Verizon Frontline, built for 5G, built to make a real difference on the front lines. Welcome back to the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix. Stock Car Racing's King, Richard Petty. And uh, his cousin Dale Lindman there with the headset on, watching intently as one of the cars they're affiliated with has gone a lap down and that crash that being Jimmy Johnson. Well, let's bring in NASCAR Cup winningest active road course driver Chase Elliott recuperating in uh, in Colorado. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Glad we could make this work. I know you'd sure rather be out there uh, than, than sitting where you are, but we got off to a great start in turn one and then what happened and how are you doing most importantly? Yeah, I'm doing really good. I uh, appreciate you guys having me, and thanks to Fox for, for setting this up and, and making this go. So um, I'm looking forward to, yeah, just watching the race with you guys. I don't know. We're just kind of getting started. I was hoping we could get more than a lap or so going to understand a little bit of what's going on. I saw Jordan kind of had a tough opening lap, but, yeah, I hate Jimmy got taken out there, but uh, a lot of racing left and excited to see kind of where it goes and, and some of the things that... Um, some of the things I can see from this vantage point is super different than what I'm used to seeing. Obviously, I must be in there, too, but um, we're working through it, so we'll make the most of it. Man, ain't seeing the headset on you, buddy. I, I don't, why didn't they pick you to replace that crew chief set on top of that box? I think you might be able to do it. Yeah, I don't know about, I think that'd probably go as good as you doing it, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> so I'm not sure that, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good idea, but you know, actually, we joked around about it a little bit. Uh, last couple weeks and um, yeah so I don't know never say never but I don't know that uh, my my crew chiefing abilities would go over too high well you and Jordan have been uh, texting back and forth after every session that he's been in the car and I know you've been uh, a big help to him he said as much on the pre-race show but what kind of advice uh, can you give somebody who's a winning race car in his own discipline but is new to this kind of racing it, it's tough, and I think from my perspective, I've just tried to probably say too much just in case something dumb that I say happens to make sense, right? I, I, would, I would rather give him too much yeah. information and, and just like one of those things click in his mind. Um, you know, and I, I did run the Rolex 24, you know, a couple years ago. So some of those things I do feel like 
the cars are very different, but I think anything I can do just to say, hey, this was a big hitter for me and me transitioning to those cars, you know, let's think about it from, from the other way. How can, how can I help you get this direction? Um, so I've really just been giving him as much information as I possibly can, anything I see, um, and I've been super in tune with, with his comments and post-practice meetings and post-qualifying meetings. So I've been, I've been talking a lot, probably too much, um, and I'm sure a lot of it probably doesn't make sense to him and probably doesn't make sense to anybody but me, uh, but it's just in hopes that just one or two little things might, might stick and, and could make a difference today. So I'd, I'd rather give him too much information and him li not listen to 99% of it and just that 1% help. I feel like that was, it was worth it. Yeah, Chase, I mean, that's exactly how I've been with uh, our team at 2311, with Tyler Reddick, with Bubba Wallace. I've been just trying to give as much information, right? And yet it's a, it's, it's a delicate balance because there's so much experience that, that Jordan has and with Tyler, with Bubba, all behind the wheel. And so it's, it's a delicate feel, but yet you, we don't want to miss anything. We want them to be their best. But most of all, first of all, it's just great to see you, my friend. I know all the fans wanted to see you, and I'm hoping uh, PT is going well and you'll get back to the track soon. What about this racetrack? What do you love about this racetrack? What was the challenges? Yeah, I mean, it's this, this definitely a, a unique one, and, and honestly one that I feel like I struggled with the most, I would say, of all the of all the road courses. I, I really struggled at Sonoma early on. I feel like I've gotten better there, but Coda was a really tough one, and I think a lot of it is just the length of the track. And that sounds super simple and easy, but there's a lot of turns, and there's a lot of really technical places on this track. And, and I think one thing that probably gets lost in translation with, with road racing in general is, you know, we talk about going to Fontana and how old the track surface is, and we talk about going to Atlanta and how new the track surface is. Well, turn one might be abrasive and the stadium section might be repaved. And, and I think that's one of those things that, that probably doesn't get talked about a lot in, in road course racing and, and just those really small, fine details can, can make a big difference. So it's a really technical place. The laps are long uh, and, and the, the grip level in the track really changes a lot from, from turn to turn. Well, thanks for being with us. Uh, Chase is going to be with us through the day. Since none of the leaders chose to pit under this first caution of the day, we're going to step away with William Byron leading from the pole. Getting ready for the restart from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. Here they come around the stadium section and into the final couple of corners before we restart with the choose Byron on the inside Todd Reddick outside. I was quite impressed by what Chase had to say and also Kurt that they speak with their drivers or with the guy which took over his drive I think that is we ask him why are they so quick uh, as well uh, Reddick uh, uh, and uh, Taylor. I think that is part of it because they were well trained, you know, you're thinking about it and I think it's, 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 it's pretty cool from the guys putting the effort in to give them their knowledge to do better, you know. Sure Very is. Good. Here they approach the Geico restart zone. Yeah, it was definitely a big part of their success. Here we go, Kurt. A little bit better launch from Reddick uh, and then again, it's just going to fan out and then it's a matter of how much contact. Wow, look out back. Four, five, six wide. That's Ran Reddick high. Sure did. And he's I think that was William lead. Byron. That's uh, Sendrick snuck by both. That's where the front row took each other in so deep. The second row was able to take advantage of it, and that's where Sendrick's your new leader. I love that corner. Austin Sendrick from third. Sendrick started racing Bandolero and Legend cars at Charlotte, but has ra road raced in seven different countries, and all that experience paying off right here. Woo, Reddick tossing it back in there. And this is a good spot where you want to be on the on the right, and then you got to try to clear him by the time you come down this hill. Be interesting to see if Byron throws, throws it back in there. All right, they're settling out, but back here, three wide. Jordan Taylor, Whoa, big time diving. Water. Locked that left front up, got into the back of Eric Jones. Can't tell if he spun him out or not. I think they're fine. Oh, oof. That's how easy it's done. That's that's the experience that he doesn't have in these cars. Got in there, locked that up. He was, uh, you know, he was dive bombing, trying to stay off of his teammate Kyle Larson. Man, that was so close. One of the toughest things yeah, to do. Not a, not a concern is. Sorry, 
Or I jumped on you, but I was just going to say now the concern is is now that he locked up that left front tire, is it going to lock up easier now that it has a flat spot in it coming into these other hard braking zones, which you know is never a fun feeling for a driver, right? So hopefully that's not the case. It looked okay into 12, so hopefully not. And that's one of the things I was going to say. It's like it's so difficult as a new driver to go, how long did I lock that up? Or my awareness and my, my bearings, where was I? And that's why he ended up so deep. But then it's like, does he know how much he hurt the tire? It's very difficult to do that when you're a new guy in, in a big, heavy car like this. Well, hey, and you don't think you're, you're the new guy and all those guys don't know that. They know how fast you are. Your experience level is going to show that. They saw the lap times in qualifying and, and in practice. But these restarts are a whole different animal. You guys know that better than most. Trying to get him, you know, he just went spread out. Let me go back to work. Exactly. Just let me see some of my, my normal, like, pickup points on corner entry and exit. And turn one still has the excitement of the. There, oh, that's what oh, there we go. They're the turn bouncing one. off each other. It was three guys, three wide, right next to each other, and the car up front got hit, and he Chase wasn't even Fisco. expecting to get hit. Well, he did. He now he's even... got a long hold to dig out of. Briscoe was 17th. Very impressed with Cindric, how he navigated that restart, took advantage of William Byron Reddick getting into one another, got them both. He's the one that's the quiet, quiet guy out there. Everybody saw the speed in Reddick. You can see him getting right to back to his rear bumper. Obviously, William Byron on the pole, but Cindric, a lot of experience on these road courses with him. Let's go back to the restart. You see Austin Cindric. Yeah, William Byron already bouncing off uh, the outside of and running Reddick wide. Suarez almost got them both as well. Yeah, one of the toughest things is when your pace isn't up, and now you're down into turn 11 with Taylor. Oof. Oh. Yeah, it's just that's where the front just isn't going to turn if you're on the brake that hard. And then back in turn one, uh, we'll show you what happened to Briscoe. Yeah. Now, Joey Logano is going to get a pass through penalty because we don't have track limits here like Formula One except through the S's. NASCAR says through the S's, stay on the racing surface and they consider the red and white rumble strips to be part of the racing surface. But if you're inside those in the S's, you have shortcutted the course and you must do a drive through penalty at pit road speed, 40 miles an hour. Yeah, big penalty. You know, that's kind of self-policing until it's not. Now, Popo's got the radar gun out and he's looking. I bet you it's in that hot spot turn four. We'll try to find footage of it, but that's an easy place to gain a lot of time, but it's it's not worth the risk if you're going to end up getting busted. Big penalty. Won't go a lap down like you would uh, on another racetrack, a shorter racetrack, you know, your ovals, but uh, probably a, at least a 45 second penalty. Man, Reddick is all over him. He's bringing the heat. He wants that lead back big time. He's got Byron right on him. I mean, this is usually when you find trouble at this track is when second's hustling the leader and then third place is applying pressure from back there. Chase, what's your thinking on the opening laps of a race like this? Do you want to lead if you can? A pickup spots? Or do you want to just establish a rhythm early on? Well, I think the big one's getting through turn one. I mean, I know we talk about it a lot, but it's very true. I mean, I look at Jordan. He qualified fourth there, right? Now he's outside the top 10 in, in just a couple of laps. Um, so I think a lot of it's just getting into a rhythm. I, I talk about it that a lot with road course racing, but I think a lot of it's just falling into a rhythm, whether that's in first or whether that's in fifth. I think getting to that point without having damage on your car is key. I mean, look at something as simple as what happened to Briscoe. Yes, it looked like he just got turned, but he got hit straight in the left rear tire. So if I had to guess that now he's got left rear toe link damage, that's going to impact him for the rest of the day. So sure. while the front and rear bumpers are extremely uh, robust on these cars, the, the actual suspension is not. So it's, uh, it's definitely a fine balance. But I think just finding a rhythm, whether that's first or fifth, got a great battle for the lead. Yes, we do, buddy. in a buddy. great spot to go ahead. These guys are battling door to door, back and forth. You die bomb me, I'll take it back. Unbelievable race. And hey, why we're talking about that, the 11 and the 7, both caught. Cutting the course back there would be making a uh, pass-through penalty. 
This is lap seven. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are racing like it's lap 67. This is awesome just to see these guys going back and forth and the respect that they're showing right now. I don't know if that'll happen later. And NASCAR will point to the parity. Unlike Formula One, here's a Toyota, a Ford, and a Chevrolet. One, two, three. Yeah, uh, they all compete, and I think, uh, uh, as it was said before, they just try all to get in a rhythm now, I think, and then after the first pit stop, trying to uh, divide a little bit more, but in the moment, just get in a rhythm and know where we are at and get to the first of the end of the sta first stage. Tyler Reddick, one of three drivers to lead in the first eight laps at Circuit of the Americas. You have a nice cold coke, sugar, sugar, and buckle up. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Working lap nine of the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix, Tyler Reddick is the race leader. Uh, add Michael McDowell to the list of drivers who have been penalized for shortcutting the S's, and we'll show you the footage on Joey Logano uh, that was used to call his penalty, along with Denny Hamlin and Corey LaJoy. Yeah, he's seen coming the last car in the frame. Right and those there. tires are definitely under it. You can't get underneath those rumble strips. Boom, right there, busted. Pass through penalty every time. That's the NASCAR officials camera. That video pushed to Fox. Here's what uh, Joey and team had to say. All day yesterday, they call it right off the bat. Be consistent, NASCAR. Come on. Be consistent, Joey says. Okay. They grabbed three other guys right after you. So. Yeah. We'll see, I would up. say that's the hot spot. Consistent. Let's call NASCAR the Care Bears well, here's, in that corner right here's now. They're a, just going to keep busting on all the S's. The thing about that corner, though, in Joey's situation, you got three cars in front of you. He was late to see where he was at, and then all of a sudden it's in your lap. Uh, and, and that's the hard thing about that running off the track right there. Alex Bowman moving up uh, for fifth on Daniel Suarez. Jamie. Well, Chase Elliott mentioned it. Jordan Taylor had a tough couple of opportunities. they would lean on each other so he's trying to figure out his competition while figuring out his race car at the same time <laughs> well, well they do the that. show <laughs> yeah, that's well, exactly right those yellow stripes on the back of there they'll eat you every time that's all right now now's where you find a rhythm now's where you get settled in and this is where he'll start to shine so in the end, accident at the end of lap one, Ty Dillon and Jimmy Johnson out of the race. Here's Regan Smith. Well, Jimmy Johnson checked and released from the infield care center. Jimmy, I know you were so excited about today. How disappointing is this one? Yeah, it's really disappointing, but, you know, it comes with racing. It's part of it. Unfortunately, we didn't have a good day yesterday in qualifying, and we're back there around around the wreck, and we know that those those things can happen. So uh, just most disappointed for Club Wyndham. I'm very thankful they came on board for this race, and sadly we didn't take, you know, one, one lap under green. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks. Seven-time champ out of the race early here. Oh! Bubba hard in the back of Kyle Larson turns him around really hard. Larson trying to refire as Wallace Major. pulls away. We are still under green. Major damage on the front of turn 12 is where this happened. That breaking zone 20. at the end of the long straightaway. And Larson will drive away. Uh, Woo! Whoa! It's almost Some, like his brakes went out. Went wrong. Yeah. Holy smokes. Sailed it in there. That may be the, it's obviously probably the end of that 23 cars day with Bubba Wallace, but eh. I thought he hit him in the left rear wheel, Kurt. I don't, I think that's going to be okay. Let's uh, ride with the Money Lion onboard camera in Bubba's car. That thing just never slowed down. I mean, he jumped out to pass the car under braking, and then it just was, it was gone after that. I've never really seen that. You heard the tires complaining when the brakes locked up, but the car did not slow there. See the fluid on the back of that car, too, in the camera. And Cody Ware with a spin. Overcorrected. Kyle Larson in trouble again. 
And this is where guys would want to pit because the yellow is most likely going to come out. Maybe a few guys did sneak on to pit road. And caution is out. I wonder if Larson was trying to get to pit road. And All right, back up here. And he got in the oil of the car that wiped him out. That's exactly what happened. So Larson gets going again, and we have the second caution flag of the day. Oh, oh Kyle Larson boy, turned nice. by Denny oh, Hamlin. Denny Hamlin. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? And by Toyota. Let's go places. Breaking lack 12, second caution of the day. Here's why. Bubba Wallace, slow on the right. And you're going to have Denny Hamlin coming in and Kyle Larson. I mean, Bubba's wounded. He's trying to get back to the pits, and then, like, I mean, I think the five was trying to get to the pits, too. Well, I think he was definitely trying to get to the pits. I mean, it all came down to, you know, Bubba being wounded with that rear end being broke. Everything else you see, an 11 coming around there so fast made, uh, you know, a last minute uh, try to avert around him and got into that five again. Pretty bad couple of corners for Kyle. Yeah, it was just, yeah, let's just check in with the 11 radio. Trying to get into 23 because he just stopped. I don't believe so. I don't, I don't believe so. I think he was trying to get to pit road. Quite possibly. Now, uh, yesterday we heard from Kyle Busch that in driving in the Xfinity race, a car with a conventional H pattern shifter developed a blister because we don't have those kind of shifters anymore in the cup cars. We have sequential shifters. Here's a look with Larry McReynolds and our Toyota cutaway car. Prior to 2022, the transmission in our race car was a four-speed manual transmission. In our current car, it's actually a five-speed, a sequential shifter. Let's go inside the Toyota Tech Center to our Toyota cutaway car, and let's take a look at the sequential shifter. It's still located on the right-hand side of the driver, and to upshift, he just keeps clicking it back all the way to fifth gear. Downshift, you just move it forward. Now, it works pretty simple. There's a rod that goes through the rear firewall to the top of the gearbox, and that's what actually changes changes the gear. Now remember, this is a 3.41 mile road course. We've seen where drivers will be shifting roughly 25 times a lap. Mike, 68 laps. That's almost 1,700 shifts in this race today. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. This will be open this time under this second caution of the day. Looks hot in there. And we've got uh, three to go on this stage here. Uh, this will be interesting. If you want to stay out, grab some stage points and then pit while it's going to be under green is what we would assume. Uh, but there's still a lot of cleanup left. And remember, no stage breaks in road racing this year. Uh, because you could pit without losing a lap, that meant you had to decide either stage points or track position to win the race. And we've taken that out of play. We will still award stage points at the end of each stage at the end of lap 15 and lap 30. Still hard to get your head wrapped around it, Mike. I remember, you know, I had to think back of what that felt like. You know, we're so used to stage ins, not just stage points, that that caution comes out with a couple to go before the stage. Well, we're good, you know. Now, you stay out there, run a few more laps. I'm, you, you mean we're going to pit in four or five laps? That's your strategy? How's that going to work? <laughs> Larry. Yeah, Clint, that's the way we did it for years, though, before this stage racing. But, yeah, we only have seven laps on the tires. Now, if you're back in the pack, go ahead and get fresh tires. Go ahead and make adjustments. With this few laps to go, you need to get to lap 17 to make it work on a three-stop straight race. You need to get to lap 23 to make it on two stops. The leader, leader is in. Ooh, the leader just gave up those points. Going for that win. It's close enough. Larry told us that fuel window's somewhere to 20 to 24 laps. A little gambling on the line, going for this win. About a third of the field comes to pit road. Regan. Well, Mike, the call came to Tyler Reddick immediately when the caution came out that they would be pitting. They never changed their mind throughout the course of the time that they had around the lap right there. His race car started off just a little bit free, but he's happy with it right now. I mean, basically what that says you know, that's your shot fired. That's laying in the bed you make. And what that means is you run these races backwards. 
The math is there. Now you're going to need some cautions to make that math work. What I'm seeing, you probably see him, Kurt. Uh, Corey LaJoy picked up a penalty for too fast exiting. We'll be lined up and choosing for the restart when we come back. You're watching NASCAR on Fox from the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. different today. I better let uh, Gino, let's give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> From Drive to Survive, uh, one of the most heard lines. I'm curious, we say pit, everybody says pit. In, in NASCAR. How did Formula One transition from pit to box, box, box? Don't ask me where it came okay. from. It's normally, it's there since I'm there. So it was okay. there before me, basically. So I think it's just like box, box, box. Yeah, that's what you call it, bit, bit. It's I guess it's hard yeah. for that to be mistaken for anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I it's hope so. pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're no stranger to NASCAR because you worked for Jaguar and Red Bull and were a technical advisor when Red Bull came to NASCAR 05 and 06. How has this side of the sport changed since then? Most dramatically. Uh, it, has, uh, it has changed immensely technically. I mean, the car, look at this car, they're a different car now uh, than they were 15, 16 years ago, or even four, three years ago when this new car came. But I think that uh, the sport got a lot more technical. If you walk to the garage now, we've got a lot more engineers. In the old days, there was yeah. not many. Each team had one, and now I think everybody's got the what we call the war room back at home, you know, where engineers look at data, look at TV, give advice to people on the pit box because there's only a certain amount up there which can take place. But uh, it has just developed like everything. Everything yes. in the world develops, you know, but NASCAR has followed pretty, uh, pretty good there. Very much so. So would you like to drive on a NASCAR track? I mean, sure you do. Who wouldn't? Well, here's Michael Waltrip with details for you. Echo Park is doing something really cool for their customers. They can take their cars to the track. Go to SpeedwayMotorsports.com slash take it to the track for more information. Can you imagine rolling out on the Atlanta Motor Speedway, Charlotte, Texas, Vegas? Man, so much fun. Echo Park, that's where it's at. Thanks, Michael. 14 laps. We're working 14. William Byron, Austin Sindrick, A.J. Allmendinger, Alex Bowman, all of whom have figured in the finishes of the prior races here, and Daniel Suarez, who won at Sonoma last year. Jamie. Well, Mike, that incident involved the five of Kyle Larson, so I checked with his team. He brought it into pit road, and they said he was going to pit, and when that happened, Denny got into the back of him and spun him around. They checked the car. They did have some pretty significant damage in the left rear area. They were able to shut off the engine, work on it. He went back out. He's going to come in and, and top off, but he said the wheel's straight. Everything else looks good. Good. A lot of that damage, it looked to me like it was back on that rear bumper just before that oh-so-important left rear tire. These boys up front, Kurt, they are putting on a show. And look who's starting to show his face into that show. Almendinger won yesterday's race, and there he is. Bubba out of the race, unfortunately. Frustrated. Yeah, too much damage on that car to continue from the incident with Hamlin and Larson. Now, Larson on the damaged vehicle policy clock, so uh, he's going to have to take this restart and get going. Here's uh, A.J. Almendinger's radio. There's your strategy, Regan. Clint, it's been big troubles for AJ Allmendinger right now. He has no communication. They briefly had it, and that's when they updated him exactly on when he would need to pit in case he's got to make the call from the driver's seat himself. 
You know, so interesting, though, here in that fuel strategy. That's why they told him that. It's pretty much what you heard across the board when I was down in the garage earlier all day long. That 24 lap, 24 number keeps coming up for everybody's fuel mileage, and then that 44, 45 gets you to the end of the race. All right, now this restart is for stage points. They will be awarded as they cross the start-finish line, but no stage break. The race goes on. Interesting, yeah, so there'll be the restart zone and then maybe about 200 more yards will be the line and where the points will come out. But the big thing to remember here, these tires, they're old on the on the top 15 guys. Lots of refires. They're going to be slip sliding around double extra on this restart. And I would most likely see everybody start pitting in this window of 15 up to that 24 number. There we go. It's, this is going to be an interesting one with all, this, all the old tires. Back to green. And Byron will be credited with the stage win over Sindrick, Almendinger, Bowman, and Chastain. Okay, stage two. Come on, everybody in the corner. 45 went super low to the inside. Fresh tires with him. Harvick's got fresh tires as well. And there's a bunch of them back there that are kind of just log jammed up with fresh tires. So and when's the best time to capitalize on those fresh tires? Immediately, when everybody's balled up, everybody's slipping, sliding around. That's a gorgeous view. I love watching the serpentine through there. It's like the old video game centipede. <laughs> and it's tight. Asking a lot out of those cars to switch backs back and forth, back and forth. The car wants to get laterally loose, hard to handle there. Chase, what are you seeing on these restarts? Chaos. What do you <laughs> see? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, I, I think it's interesting. Obviously, the the strategies are, are, there's a wide variety of them, right? But yeah, still just three and four wide guys getting run off the road. So, again, I feel like having all these cautions early on in the race. At some point, I think it's going to get strung out. You're going to get some long green flag runs, and then we're going to start to see whose strategy is is going to work out for you know work work out best later in the race how, how do you work that right how do you the thought process in your mind uh, obviously the positions are important but you got to have that in the back of your mind a mentality man i got to finish this thing i got to have some patience here as well well I, for me i feel like those opening laps would have been a bit more tame i feel like them than what than what it was and and i think that's probably the case for you know for everybody but I think, well, I say that, and, and Suarez about gets to 48. But, you know, I think that uh, at some point, again, and, and, and we see this a lot, anytime races have a bit of a wild start, I feel like then they start to get strung out. You're going to get some going to get some run. So I anticipate that coming here probably now. The 48, that was hot. Yeah, obviously, Suarez didn't like that, put the bumper to him, moved him up. Bowman tried to stay with it and slid off the racetrack. Yeah. Three wide, Blaney on the inside, and boy, Noah Gregson almost bit the guardrail coming out of turn 20 here. There's the Suarez and Bowman. It's like he was trying to cross over and wasn't quite <laughs> clear, and he was trying to get to his inside. I was like, whoops, my bad. Well, he actually clipped that, you know, Bowman enough that Bowman missed the entrance of that corner, and then the car gets out from underneath of him and gets loose. Here's Jamie. Bubba Wallace has been checked and released. We saw the contact you had with the 11 and the 5 there, Bubba. But what happened to the car that put you out of the race? Um, broke toe link in the rear and then oil on. Just uh, trying my hardest not to go down that slippery slope of self-doubt right here. Two weeks in a row making rookie mistakes. Six years in a cup. Need to be replaced. Thanks, Bubba. Nah, he's always so hard on himself. I mean, he, he wants the best and he, he wants to continue to improve on the road courses and the short tracks where he knows he's good and then the mile and a half are his his cup of tea but man you're all right man there's there's mistakes that happen just don't make the same one twice William Byron's fourth stage win of 2023 uh, most of all drivers he only had four stage wins in all of 2022 he is the hottest thing in the sport right now now earlier in the weekend we saw uh, we saw patches on people from different racing schools, Skip Barber and others. Uh, Byron has his own personal driver coach, and it's former IndyCar star Max Pappas uh, is his development uh, coach. And, boy, you can see on these road courses the difference uh, that that has made for William Byron. 
Yeah, Max Pappas, he's a great guy. I mean, he's he's from Italy. He's got the MPI steering wheels. And when you talk to Max, right, Gunther, he goes, well, of course, I'm Italian. I am more superior than you. I know how to drive. <laughs> Max is great. I love him. Connor Daly back in uh, 34th there. And Ryan Blaney started out back. He's up to 27th right now. We're going to take you Fox side by side. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Yeah. Sick. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Did you know that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care? A two-year or 25,000-mile maintenance plan and roadside assistance. That's the value you can expect from Toyota. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. People throw around legend a little too freely these days. Legends are legends for a reason. It's why most are never called up. Stewart wins at Richmond. A legend in this sport is about 75 years of going fast and all the unforgettable moments that build those years up. So after all this time, when we call something NASCAR legends, you best know we mean it. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man. Hey, what's up? Uh, Houston, we have a situation. How did you get here? Your character's in our video game. Video game? Yeah, it's what we do with Xfinity 10G. It's like, you know, the best network imaginable. What the heck is that? Those are the bad guys. Are they friendly? The 10G network, only from Xfinity. One giant leap for mankind. to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bristol Dirt Race. Easter weekend on Fox. This is Chaos will ensue. Who's gonna save it? Holy cow! The NASCAR Cup Series. Bristol. Easter Sunday on Fox. Bring my Yahtzee here. When you need parts, eBay Motors ensures a guaranteed fit. Hey, Dave? Yep. Wait. How are those new wipers? They're small. Just go to eBay Motors, where the check means a guaranteed fit. Let's ride. Come on, Charlie! Get crafts, sporting goods, restaurants, and the future of NASCAR all from your neighborhood. DoorDash. NASCAR's biggest and baddest track is back. Get your tickets now at TalladegaSuperSpeedway.com. Working lap 18, Ryan Blaney uh, got off course in a one corner and came in for a left rear, left side tires. Brad Kozlowski spun multiple incidents here while we were in break. Might have got a little help there. Oh, got spun by the Blaney that was on pit road. Oh! And then Ryan gets spun. Yep. The guy got, it was Larson that got into him. One thing I noticed is the lap time the guys can do on the used tires in the front, the people which didn't come in, they can do the same lap times as the people which put new tires on. So that's quite amazing. I thought the, guy, the guys on the new tires will catch up, but uh, they are not in the moment, so I don't know. That's a great observation. Yeah, I thought the pace would have been quicker yeah. with stickers on for yeah. sure. That was pretty hard uh, contact for Blaney uh, there with Larson. And so that's an extended stay on pit road, likely toe link getting replaced in the left rear. So you see when the drivers were in uh, since uh, their last pit stop, we've run 18 laps. So all those 18s are drivers that have not yet stopped in this race. 
Well, I think that opens the door up. It's an interesting perspective that you notice that, Gunther. That that opens the door up for the conversation of fuel mileage. That's really why you're trying to offset yourself and differentiate yourself from these front runners is take advantage of something else strategy-wise. You guys don't have that. All you have is tires in F1. Yeah, it, it, it is very easy in F1, as you say, you know, compared to this one, no. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, that's a big difference. If you have to calculate fuel mileage, it, 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 it's a lot more difficult to get the tire sorted out. Uh, we just look at the degradation of the tire, and then we decide when and where to change. Yeah, and then so have here's what I see, you know, guys. One pit stop. Absolutely. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah, here's what I see, guys. When we come back around, we're coming to lap 20. That'll be 48 laps to go right there. Split that in half. That's 24 laps to run. I think the window's about to open for a lot of these leaders to come to pit road. In the perfect world, you come, and then a caution comes out, and everybody else has to pit under caution. You don't want to be the last one to pit under green. Yeah, and if you have the opportunity, like you said, to, to jump a caution. But these guys are showing such good pace that are that are out front, Larry. I just don't see the advantage of, of the guys pitting because if I'm not mistaken, I think you can two stop this race. I'm not sure it's required to do three. So just keeping their track position and keeping themselves out of trouble. Look what happened to Kyle and, and Ryan there. Those two cars definitely have damage. Well, Martin Truex and Tyler Reddick are flying up through the field uh, after pit stops. They've climbed to 12th and 13th now. Here's the Toyota cam on board Truex. As long as you got a group of them ahead of you like that, it's easy to gain those spots. And what happens, though, is when the pit cycle starts, now you get all that clean air back up front. So all these different varying strategies are going to start to unfold here once, these, once the lead group pits. And that's how you do it better than the rest. Two for one. Take advantage of that Martin Truex trying to make the pass on Ryan Priest. Cross them over. Pass them both. Boom. Rolling that 45 car. Fastest car on the track all weekend long. I know William Byron beat him on that last round of, of qualifying. But without a doubt, Reddick, check this out. They went wide. He was able to turn under them, take advantage of a, a neat uh, situation corner that they have on this place. Gave him room, though. See, he gave uh, Truex plenty of room. And that's what I like about yeah. that, is racing each other with respect. All that contact is uh, just going to slow you down. Yeah, it might have been a little Toyota camaraderie there. It's like, all right, you're a little quicker. I'll let you go for right now. Regan. Well, Kyle Busch deciding to peel off onto pit road. His race car been a little loose with the rear of it so far to start the race, complaining about the back sliding around more than he needs. All right, well, you heard them guys. They're talking about coming on that 24. Well, I need some track position. How am I going to do that? Come a little bit early. Just yes. a button on pit road. He had gotten up uh, into the top 15 and makes his first NASCAR pit stop alongside Almirola. And you know, talking to him, Kurt, in the pre-race, this was right down his game plan. He's going to be patient. You could feel that in his conversation that he had with us, and I think it's paying off for him. Yeah, when you're in such a unique situation with the car, uh, you just want to make no mistakes and just try, try to stay nice, smooth, and simple. But he knows this racetrack. He knows Coda, so he's able to apply things. And once you cross over halfway through the race, it's like, all right, I've gained all the knowledge that I have. It's time to apply it. Look at the fenders on that car, though. That's what I'm saying. Very patient out there. A lot of chaos, a lot of torn up race cars already. A lot of big name drivers out of this race. See Jordan Taylor's, he's wanting them tires, needing them tires. Austin Dillon's all over him. Even. Can't really settle in at this racetrack, can you, Chase? Always something. If you if you try to give up a position, now the car two behind you is is in there too, and you end up, end up giving up too. Yeah, and we, we see that a lot with these cars now too. They're so draggy. When guys get side by side, you almost open up the door for the person behind you, even at ovals. But when I look at this track in particular, a lot of your passing zones lead to corners that put you in the unfavorable lane. So I look at turn one, you're obviously going to try to outbreak someone to the left. Well, that puts you on the outside going down the hill for turn two, which then has you out of position, much like coming into turn 11. You're trying to outbreak to the left, and then that puts you in a, I'm sorry, into 12. That puts you in a really tough position going into that stadium, uh, stadium section. So 
just a, a really awkward track and those those braking zones really put you in a bad spot for the next turn. Well, that's what it was designed for <laughs> the entertainment side of it and the ability to make those crossover passes and you're exactly right Chase it's the braking zone is one thing and then the next set of corners uh, you never really can get away from a guy cleanly once you do make a pass. So Ty Gibbs pits from seventh. And if you look at your scoring pile on the top seven drivers have yet to make an appearance on pit road down through Christopher Bell uh, add in Truex and Taylor to that mix. Everybody else has been on pit road at least once. Well, things are finally starting to calm down a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> it took a while, didn't it? <laughs> well, it'll be interesting. You know, we heard Almendinger told be told that he's going to pit on 24 if these guys peel off a lap before maybe two laps before do you follow them or do you stay out stick to the to the game plan there I mean what's cool is we got one two three four all top four cars right there uh, this is uh, one of those like ins and out laps in F1 where it's like push 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 right to get as much as you can on your in and on your out lap to try to leapfrog guys yeah you try to unlock that sometimes speed but I look at the lap times and, uh, and the guys with uh, uh, no pit stop yet. They are still making the same times as people who change the tires. So maybe the best strategy is to get until you need the fuel and uh, do a two stop. That's you know, what this is. Yeah, looks like, yeah. For yes, the moment, sir. Yeah. So yeah. if you split this up equally, it'd be yeah. 23, 23, 22. But they split it 24, 24, 20 because you need to have some fuel left in case of overtime. So which driver? will have the better finish at the end of stage two. That is one of Blitz Super Six questions. And not just which driver will be ahead of the other, but by how many positions. Got to put your thinking cap on to win 10 grand today on uh, Fox Pit Super Six. May have to be lucky. But... I'd say, though, the biggest movers. Uh, let's go down to Jamie with the nine. Uh... Jordan Taylor, he's never made a pit stop in NASCAR. This is unlike anything he's done before in any of the kind of racing. It's four tires and fuel here. A little bit tight on corner entry, but so many things he's hearing and thinking about right now. Seems to be a good stop for Jordan Taylor in the nine. See him waiting on that fuel. Had that pit stop done, waiting on the fuel. Need that fuel to get to this next stop. Make it to the end of this race. That's where you tell the pit crew, hey, just get the lugs tight, take your time, so we'll be waiting on fuel. The fuel guy on races like this and super speedways, a lot of times, is the most important guy. Woohoo! Did you see Almendinger holding yes. on to that thing? Yeah, these tires are at the end of their life on these front runners. Uh, Corey LaJoy is dragging his diffuser, so he is being posted to come to pit road. Gunther, don't you own that company? <laughs> Boy, they'll be on the phone <laughs> Monday morning. Sounds like they called me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> give him a deal. <laughs> so uh, Kyle Busch uh, pitted on lap 20. Randall Burnett, his crew chief, told him his right front tire probably would not have made another lap. Interesting. It's probably over cambered. Uh, it'd be on the inside edge. Uh, and it, that's that's interesting. I mean, uh, we wouldn't have thought that we would have heard about that. And then usually these tires, just, they just go when there's an issue. So. That the beginning of a race, though, is usually the most abrasive on the tires, and so hopefully we won't hear about that problem later. And that was only 12 green flag laps, uh, Larry tells me. So ah, maybe it was a, a flat spot. I don't know. Cedric on pit road. That's one of our leaders. One of the six that have not yet pitted, Austin Cedric. And the leading Ford in the race comes to pit road. 22 taking 23 right on top of that number. Jamie. Alex Bowman in his pit box. He's been pretty happy. Top three lap times here. The pace has been good. Remember Greg Ives, his former crew chief, on the box. Austin Cendrick always so good on these road courses. Right now he's a little bit too tight with the car to get to the cars in front of him, though. Wants an adjustment for that in the middle of the corner. So that leaves only three drivers on course that have not yet made a pit stop. Your first three, Byron, Almendinger, and Suarez. Takes about 45 seconds to come down pit road, get four tires, and exit here. Looks like a pretty slow pit stop on Cindric there. He had a lot of trouble on the right rear. 
And those top three are all Chevys. So it looks like their fuel has given them the, the most generous options when it's going to get down to the end of this. Now Chevrolet made an announcement this week that this sixth generation of Camaro will sunset after the 2024 model year and that no immediate replacement is planned. However, Vice President of Motorsports Jim Campbell said don't worry about that. Chevrolet is committed to NASCAR. We're going to be here for a long time. But uh, the Camaro nameplate, well, get you one now or next year because after that, it's going away. Well, look on that ticker. You see 45, Tyler Reddick. He will assume this lead. I would, I would anticipate Byron and Allmendinger, Suarez pitting. Did a great job getting up through the field, not tearing that car up. And here he is. Gonna yeah. assume the lead again. Yeah, so he's only eight seconds off. And then the full exchange on pit road, when the 24 commits to the pit right. entry lane, this time. and by the time he gets to the exit, if the smooth pit stop happens, he'll lose 45 seconds. So 45 seconds back is where he'll end up blending back in. That would put him back about 25th or 6th, uh, but still on the lead lap at the worst. And here they're all in, all three. First pit stop of the day for William Byron, who has led now 17 laps. Yeah, so far, so good for them. We'll go down to pit road. 40 miles an hour. Doesn't look very fast, Regan. Well, William Byron's been managing the tires and managing the fuel this entire run. No complaints on the race car. Said he loves where the car's at. And you see A.J. Allmendinger in the 16 car behind him. The plan is to throw a radio into A.J. So if they get a yellow flag, he can try and hook it up. And here's the race. And William Byron leads them out of the pits as we look at our race off pit road. Sponsored by Ram. There's the eight car. So that's that uh, push, push, push on the eight. You know, he got tires a little sooner. Will he be able to clear Suarez? Well, statistically, we're seeing new tires worth about six tenths of a second per lap over the worn ones that just came off. Tyler Redding is back out front in Austin, Texas. Lap 25, Tyler Reddick leading Austin Little, and that brings us to the Coca-Cola Racing Family Update with Dylan in second. Uh, Joey Logano, after a speed, uh, one pass-through penalty for cutting the S's in 10th, Hamlin 11th, same penalty, and Daniel Suarez just made his pit stop, um, so he is 18th. Corey LaJoy uh, being posted to come to pit road, dragging the diffuser. He's had a tough day. Yes, he has. This guy here, though, he's finding his groove. He's leading by four seconds, and we've only got a few laps left in this stage. That was probably their agenda, was give up stage one, and that way you can grab points in stage two. A road course ringers, after everybody has now made one pit stop, Kimi Raikkonen in the uh, number 91. He is 13th. Jordan Taylor just made a pit stop, 27th. Uh, Jensen Button was in the top 20s, falling to 31st to Connor Daly, uh, 36th. I like that. That's impressive for Kimi. You know, he's got that one start up at Watkins Glen last summer. Jensen, same thing. Just, I, I think patience. You know, you come into something new like this. You knew, watch this before. You knew these restarts are going to be wild. Surviving a storm. Yep. Raikkonen is the last Ferrari driving world champion. And he got his last Formula One win right here at Coda. I like that. And look at that stud. He's got the sunglasses on in his character. Nobody else got to wear their sunglasses. I mean, is that an Iceman thing? It's an evolution. <laughs> to, to, to wear sunglasses at night like Kim, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Larry Mack, let's talk fuel strategy here. With the tire fall off being less than a second, is that maybe what led teams to a two-stop rather than a three-stop strategy? 
Mike, that, that's what I'm thinking, because right now, when I look at the top 14 drivers, including Tyler Reddick and this 45 that's leading right now, yeah, he's probably going to get those 10, 10 stage points here in a little over three laps. He's going to get that playoff point. But they stop so early, they have to make two more trips to pit road. But from William Byron on down, everybody that pitted lap 20 or later, they only have to make one more pit stop. The tire degradation, the tire fall off is just not as great as we thought it was going to be. Okay. Let's sit for more on tires. Here's Jamie. Well, Mike, we have a new tire this year. It's grippier. Last year, didn't see much wear at all. This time, we are seeing wear. This came off of Jordan Taylor's car after 22 laps. The delaminating, it's almost like a chunking. This is the right rear. Same thing here with the left front. Now, we heard we could expect some of that. They saw it a little bit in practice, but certainly something to keep in mind moving forward. Sure. Remember, uh, Jordan had an early brake lockup uh, slid into another car there, so that might have been a uh, contributing factor there. Well, Chase, if you were on the horn to Jordan right now, what would you be telling him? Well, I think he's doing a good job. I mean, he's got the car clean, right? Not having any damage through this point in the race is a big is a big deal. And he's got to get to the end in order to have a good finish. So I think he's doing a good job. And, and at these road courses, sometimes you just have to let the strategy play out and get closer to the end of the race to really understand what it's going to kind of look like. And, and I think you're at this, you know, the stage where you got a lot of different stuff going on, and, and we need to just kind of see where it plays out when, when everybody gets closer to the end. All right, Kurt's going to take us for a little tap dancing here with uh, Tyler Reddick. Yeah, I love the foot camera, and it helps really give you a perspective of how much he's on the brakes coming down to here in the 11, pushing hard and blipping the throttle to match the downshifts on the revs, and then he'll ease into the throttle, ease into it and go full, grabbing gears down the long back straightaway. Real quick blips. I mean, we're now graded on how quick we get our shifts done. But here we go. Boyer, this, take us down into this 12. This would be interesting if he pumps that pedal. Pumps that brake pedal. I want to make sure. There it is. Just a little bit of feel. I want to make sure that pedal's there. It's not a good feeling when you go off in that corner 175 mile an hour. That pedal goes to the floor. I All right, Gunnar, you're laughing at that. Why? At that little uh, confidence hit. At Clint are laughing because he knows that uh, he would do the same because he's scared that you have no brake in that, in that <laughs> thing, you know, that is why I'm laughing. I'm not laughing. Yes. I think all the drivers, as, last, uh, as much as they are tough guys, I mean, going in there at that speed, you want to make sure your brake is there when you get there. Yes. And then watch the throttle through this long carousel. Nice and easy all the way through. Nice and smooth. And then boom, yeah, check that out. The heart rate. Boyer's all over this. That's a... That's beating pretty good there. That's a lot of beating. He's for... working hard, hot in this car too. Look at last week with sustained high-speed laps compared to today. He's working hard. The road courses do that. Road courses to me were always one of the toughest, and in Martinsville, like that place would always wear me out as well. It's just because you're up on the wheel and throttle, brake, steering all day long. Lap again, let go. But I'd say right now, Reddick's in his groove. They're going to grab these stage points, and then they probably, I mean, we'll ask Larry Mack. I mean, they're probably going to run this out as far as they can go on gas and then see where they end up coming out. You heard him talk about it, that 44-45 lap. Well, back to the Ovals next week at Richmond on FS1, and then in two weeks, the NASCAR Cup Series heads to the dirt track at Bristol for some bumper-to-bumper mud-slinging action sponsored by Coyote Tractors. Easter Sunday evening only on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Tickets available for the Bristol Dirt Race. You can get yours now at bristolmotorspeedway.com. So right now, every driver in the top 12 on your scoring pylon stopped between lap 11 and lap 14. Uh, so did Raikkonen and Keselowski. Byron is the first of those that sp uh, stopped in the most recent sequence of lap 20 to 24. Yeah, this is what's all new with the strategy on, on how things are going to get spread out for a little bit, but things will come back together like an accordion. Well, that 24 card. He is on the two-tire stop, right? He is going to be the Reddick. You're watching the Reddick in the lead. You know, he's clear out here. 
but he pitted so much earlier on lap 13 that he is going to have to pit somewhere around probably 38, 36 to uh, to make it to the end. And oh, by the way, that's not going to get him to the end. He's going to need some cautions. Without a caution, that 24 car is in the catbird seat. That's what makes this interesting. That's why you move and take away stage breaks and, and the, the things that they've done to try to make this interesting. So Mike, Kurt, Clint, Gunther, I've been doing the math. So Tyler Reddick pitted on lap 13. If he goes to the max side of fuel number, 24, to your point, Clint, that takes him to lap 37. If he does that again, 24 more laps, it takes him to lap 61. That's six to seven laps short of the checkered flag. That's going to take a lot of saving and a lot of cautions. That's not going to get it. Okay. You're going to need cautions. I don't think you're going to save on this track this big. 20 turns, way too long around here. Going to need some help. I agree with you. He's going to need some help. I mean, he, he had a four-second lead a little bit earlier. Now it's a seven-second lead. Can you start to back it off? I don't really think you're going to gain that much fuel by dropping your pace, but he does have a big cushion. Final lap of stage two. Again, no stage breaks, just the stage end and the points awarded. The race rolls on. Redick ahead of Austin Dillon, Michael McDowell, Harvick, who was the first car to stop uh, today on lap 11, and Busher. It's a cool feeling being that far out in front, man. We hadn't seen that in a long time. Uh, somebody that's in their rhythm, in their groove, and on a different strategy. I think that's just it. I mean, you look down, a Dylan and a Gow, they're the only other two. That 45 car was pretty much lights out in the competition all week long. 170 miles an hour, down to about 45. Right there for Reddick, completing stage two here. And going to pick up his first stage win of the season. Yeah, we ride along with him and just listen. That's a full shift. That was not a short shift. So he's second gear through here. And when you go to do some shifts and downshifts, you can start to gather a little bit of fuel, but ah, seven laps going to be tough. And out there, he's got clean air, which is good as well. You know, he can do his own race in the moment, but then the only thing is fuel. Yeah, right now, the, the 45 team is, is racing the racetrack, racing their gas tank. Going. Good. So Tyler Reddick wins stage two, seven and a half seconds in front of Austin Dillon, Michael McDowell, Kevin Harvick, Chris Busher on the top five at the end of stage two. All the drivers on a three-stop strategy coming in here at lap 32. Austin Dillon, who was running second, the first car in, and Kevin Harvick, who led the first parade into the pits at lap 11, uh, right behind him. Kyle Larson among those. With one more stop in the offing for them, and you see things are pretty well strung out. Oops, Kyle Larson too fast entering, and Ty Dillon has been given a penalty Drive-through penalty for, uh, or excuse me, Ty Gibbs for shortcutting the S's. Ty Gibbs. Justin Haley, the Celsius cam, giving us these shots. He's in 22nd. And 33 drivers on the lead lap. I'm telling you, Gunther. Two-tire stop wins this baby without a caution. The way this race is spreading out. My man Byron's stop. looking good. Two-stop, Shad. Two-stop. You know what I meant. Yeah, I know what you meant. I, I think we're here <laughs> in the 45 might pit, and it's due to the lead that they have. If they do the full cycle, they might come back out within the group that pitted earlier. So they're, they're looking to um, change up the strategy a little bit but due, due to the pace. Here they are. They are on pit road. So you see upper left uh, where the 24 is coming around to try to overhaul the 45. Oh, he'll for sure overtake him. Uh, it's just a matter of where he blends back in. But let's go down to Regan. 
Well, Tyler Reddick, the first run of the race was primarily loose everywhere. Little adjustment on the car. This time he's only loose through the carousel. Pretty happy from the driver's seat. Clean pit stop. Didn't have to wait on fuel because they're not into the stretching on the fuel side. So be interesting to see where, where he plays out. There's your leader, 24. Or well, will, will be once it's cycled. It will be, around. yes, because Busher and Jones came in at lap 11 and 13, respectively. They will have to stop. And he blended in a spot where there's not a lot of traffic, so that, that's actually pretty good. If he would have had like three or four guys sweating him, uh, that he would have lost more time on the exchange. So Chris Busher is your leader. He was on pit road at lap 11. Busher, Eric Jones, and Joey Logano are the three stop cars uh, that have yet to make their second stop, along with Haley and Burton, who are further back. It's all clear sailing, right? Everybody's a bit spread out. Uh, the, the chance for a yellow is, is at a minimum. I mean, there's always something that could happen. But these are when, when you first pit, <laughs> if you're feeling lucky and everything's going your way, you end up with a yellow right after you pit. Byron pulls out of the draft on uh, Jones, who may be pitting this time. Jamie. Yeah, listening to the radio for Eric Jones. He's just had a great weekend, Mike. Great qualifying effort of eighth yesterday. Went to the Skip Barber School here at Coda. Been putting a lot of effort into his road coursing skills, trying to get better. He's been pretty happy with the car. Now we could follow William Byron, learn a little bit more here. But Eric Jones shown in the third spot on the two-stop strategy. Richard Petty, Dale Inman looking on. King won seven championships in that 43 and 200 race victories, including a lot on the road courses at uh, Riverside, California. All right, Busher is in. That will hand the lead over to William Byron. Here's Jamie. And Chris Busher drives down pit lane for his second stop of the day. Here's a driver who's sneaky good on the road courses, finished top 10 in the last five straight, including a second at Sonoma. You see Eric Jones on the right side in as well. Four tires and fuel for him. So that leaves only Joey Logano of the three stoppers uh, who has not been to pit road. Justin Haley and Harrison Burton. Uh, what you're seeing is the, the usual suspects starting to pop back up here, and I, I like what I'm seeing, though, out of the 45. They, they aborted on that, on that sequence, and now they find themselves six seconds back. I think that's actually minimizing the damage of what could have happened if they were going to go long. So William Byron back to the lead. He led 16 laps previously today. William Byron leading A.J. Allmendinger by 1.6 seconds. Daniel Suarez third. Tyler Reddick fourth. Just ran his personal fastest lap of the race. And last year's winner, Ross Chastain, fifth. Saturday on Fox, baseball's back. The Giants battle the reigning American League MVP Aaron Judge and the Yankees. Or you'll see the Phillies take on the Rangers. It all begins Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Ty Gibbs cutting the S's. He'll make another drive through penalty. His car has dropped a cylinder. And Harrison Burton, no first gear in the 21. Got a nice little battle here with Truex and Bell. We've got Cindric in the mix. And all these guys are on the same strategy. They all pitted within a lap of each other. Uh, just 20 seconds off of Byron's lead pace right now. I, I don't want to brag. I don't want to say anything crazy here. I'm, I'm watching the lap times. I mean, Tyler Reddick just busted off the fastest lap of his race on lap 34, and he's only four seconds back of the lead. He just now passed Suarez. That car is on fire. Not literally, but just in fuego. It's it's hauling the mail. It's going really fast. Yeah, four seconds back, and he's catching him over what? Almost two seconds faster. He's catching him very fast. 
wicked fast lap time. Wicked fast. So look at the dirt on that corner. You know what? If it, if a restart does happen, they better clean it up. So one thing he's not doing is putting a dent in that six laps of fuel he needs to save, uh, which, I mean, that's an impossibility, right? He, I mean, right now, I think he's they, doing it with like, his race car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Chase and I were talking about it a little bit off the air. I mean, Chase, I think what they did is they just said, man, our strategy is so far out there. We've got to abort and get back into the, the normal range. What do you think, Chase? I, I would agree. And I think probably the biggest thing that's saving him is his pace, right? So he's in a position right now where he's outpacing these guys. And even though they messed up on the strategy, they kind of got baited into pitting early because of those early cautions. Now that it's strung out, they realize they were in a lot of trouble and his pace is saving him. He's fast enough. He got that lead. He wasn't thinking about saving fuel. He's thinking about getting a big enough gap so that when they stop that 40 seconds or so that you mentioned, he was going to fall back in line closer to the lead on the back end of the stop in. So now they're back in good shape and he's close enough to him now where heck, he might catch him outright with that pace he's showing currently. Yeah, we talked about it. You know, it's lap 36. It's going to we think the number's somewhere around 44, 45. With the pace he has, they made a mistake, if you will. They changed, you know, chanced it on a different strategy. Didn't work out, but he's so fast, it's not going to matter. He's right back into that conversation on that same lap. Now, one driver who did not change his game plan was Joey Logano. They stopped at lap 11, and Logano is still out there. He's in eighth place, but he's the only driver. Uh, on the lead lap who has not made his second stop. He just goes by again, so uh, he's going to run it more than 24 laps on this tank. That's a long stretch on fuel. That's, uh, that's I guess they're just trying to jump in that bed, and that's, that's the bed they're laying in now. Chase, talk to me about attrition. Not having those stage breaks, right? The caution coming out, taking that breather as a driver. Pretty hot out here. Workload through the roof on this long track. No, I think you're spot on, and I think it's relevant today, too. I mean, this is probably the hottest day that they've had throughout the season. Obviously, I haven't been at the last couple or whatever, but it looks like and, and seems like this has been the hottest weekend. William talked about it in our, our post-practice debrief yesterday, so I know it's been on their minds. And not to mention, Byron and Almendinger both ran that race yesterday, so you know they were smoked after running those last 20 laps 110%. Um, so definitely on their minds and, and still a long ways to go, too. Big pass right there as Reddick goes by Almendinger and up into second place. I think Almendinger, oh, I know he did. He just let him go right there. That car's getting that big in the mirror that quick. Have at it. Yeah, that's a little bit of etiquette I think we just found. <laughs> but yeah, when a car catches you that fast, it's just like, you know what, buddy, you go on ahead. Especially at this point in the race. Race this racetrack, race the strategy. Win the battles you need to win. Yeah, and that wasn't one of them, right? Yeah, not yet. Pay window. You hear me say it every weekend. That old window is not open yet, Gunther. <laughs> Clint, you're going to lose your money. There are two players still alive in our Super Six contest for ten thousand yes. dollars. I think there's probably still at least one question still to be decided. That's a race fan. Yep. I'm telling you right now, if you had all those picks right in the wild start of this race and you were still in it to win it, hats off to you. Come and get my money. I like it. Jamie. Well, you guys mentioned Joey Logano and how he has not pitted since lap 11. I talked to Paul Wolf, his crew chief, and he said this weekend, the road course stuff in general, they're just off a little bit. Don't have that raw speed that they really feel they needed to contend for a win. Thought maybe a fifth to tenth place car, so they're mixing that up with strategy here. And Joey, of course, right now, those old tires, he just wants some adjustments. Drive off, not very good, a little too tight in the 22. So staying with the plan, Larry says they could probably go one more lap uh, before they absolutely need fuel. William Byron out front of all the top six. Only one of them has never had a top five finish on a road course. And that's Byron. Say what? Yeah, uh, he's the only driver in the top six without a road course victory. Or a top five. Top five. Okay. Wow. I, I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have thought he would have that box checked already. Right. But the again, year he's having, oh. that's going to be short lived. That's yeah. that. That's for sure. Uh oh. Christopher Bell. 
Well, let's talk about strategy. Now, you see the blue flag waving. That is an advisory flag. There is something ahead you need to be aware of. You don't have to slow down. You don't have to stay in line. It's just a, it's an advisory flag for the drivers. Trouble ahead. In that case, it was the 20 around. Very close. Ryan Priest and Larry said the track looked dirty in that area, and that may be why he spun. Here's a look. It was. I mentioned it earlier. Everybody goes through that dirt. Car in front of yep. him nailed it. Look how low McDowell was behind him all the way down in it. If a restart does happen, they better get the outside of that corner cleaned up. There was a bottom out. You hear us talking about those rub blocks. Look at the dirt flying. Yeah, that's turn eight. You can drop your right sides off, and then it looked like Seabell missed the corner by maybe a tire width, which put his outside tires in a lot of the uh, the fuzz that's been kicked up. But here we go. Here's Reddick. Unbelievable the pace that he has. Just think how fast or how far ahead he would have been if he had been on a on a uh, two strategy call there, two stop strategy. Let's see. To the inside for the lead. How much you can do to defend that? Just I spot. Clear. Clear. You are the leader. He had this speed in practice. The question was, you know, that up front speed that he showed in practice, was it going to live? And I would have told you, Gunther, there's no chance he could have kept that pace up. Boy, he proved me wrong in this race. I think he pushed us all along, you know. I mean, it's so amazing the, the pace he has got. I mean, you know, with the pit stops, I mean, he's just like got it all back. Can you imagine with that? two-stop strategy for the race where he would be now he would be gonna lap some people so Joey Logano you saw just made uh, his second stop of the day he will need one more 30 laps to go in the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Circuit of the Americas Tyler Reddick has retaken the lead from William Byron You're watching Tyler Reddick lead William Byron by 1.4 seconds from our Goodyear aerial coverage. Powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. 29 laps to go here in Austin, Texas. In just three weeks, real football for real fans is back. The USFL season opening kickoff weekend starts the new season April 15th and 16th on Fox, NBC, and FS1. There's Daniel Suarez, three seconds back of the lead, and A.J. Allmendinger, a three and a half back, third and fourth. Ross Chastain is fifth. Lap 40 here, still plan C. Next up to 24. Let's go. <laughs> plan C. That plan C is, without a doubt, Billy Scott is going to do exactly what those other guys are going to do. And I'm going to tell you, whenever they pit, when they say they're going to pit, I want to be on that sequence. I do not want to get off a sequence with the guys I'm racing against that I'm way faster than, oh, by the way. This whole idea of running the race backwards, finding out how much fuel you need to get to the end, making that your last stop, and starting with the finish lap and backing up the race is widely credited to engineer Bob Cuneo, uh, builder of winning modifieds, Paul Newman's Dotsons, the Bodine bobsleds, and he was lead engineer for Jeff Bodine in the Cup Series and developed this way of running road courses from the last lap backwards to the first and planning your pit stops that way. You'll have that up here, Gunther. Did you know that? I did not know that. No, I, I'm getting, I'm so impressed. I'm getting uh, so much history lessons from uh, um, Mike this weekend. You know, I, I'm, I'm going away like, uh, you know, just enlightened. <laughs> well, then let's get current with Larry Mack. <laughs> Mike, I was crew chief, obviously, that day. Paul Andrews was the crew chief for Jeffrey Bodine. And when we saw what they were doing, we had no idea what they were doing. In fact, we wondered, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> but it worked out. He went to victory lane. Sure did. Denny Hamlin's going to have a hard time getting to victory lane today. Uh, 17th at the time of that spin. Yeah, that was the same corner. This is uh, turn eight where everybody kicks up the dust. And if you're offline a little bit, you're out there in the fuzz. Fuzz got him. I mean, the popo are in the in the chicane, in the yeses, right? That, that fuzz is just dirt. 
you know, their <laughs> ability to get down below those uh, rumble strips and just keep dipping farther and farther into that dirt. Uh, so many times, you know, Sonoma, when you have everybody getting into one and up the hill there, dipping their left side. Oh, Caution. my gosh. <laughs> Turn nine, debris has brought out the third caution of the day. There's the dirt. Well, that's where, yeah, Denny Hamlin came back on track in turn nine, but yeah, that's... I don't like it. Run my strategy conversation up. These guys are needing a breather, but dang it. They caused it. <laughs> they were in the dirt. <laughs> and what happens is just so many green flag laps, so many cars going through the dirt in turn eight, the, the whole place was turning into soup over there. Look at that. I mean, if that, you miss your line and don't get down, yeah. you said it, Kurt. You nailed it, too. And Denny, he was just a little bit high above those rumble strips, got those left side tires in it. What do you think, Chase? Did you like it? Oh, me. I don't know what to think about that. If I'm Tyler Reddick, I certainly don't like that at all. I've been in that, uh, in that position, but... Yeah, I mean, obviously, to your point, they need to get it cleaned off now because those cars are going to have to be too wide going through that corner. So as long as they get it cleaned off. But, yeah, if I'm Tyler, I'm probably not too happy. And they will. They're going to send uh, the jet dryer out below that corner of the track. And we remind you again, there are no track limits here except in the S's. You want to shortcut that corner, kick up a little dirt like the guys used to do at Riverside, California? Well, you go right ahead, but here's the result. Look how much dirt is. Oh, don't look at him. Look at that <laughs> dirt that was kicked up in that corner. It was getting pretty bad. Well, he's going to need some fancy fit work, uh, footwork there because this is one of the narrowest pit roads in NASCAR. And if they all come, we have 33 cars on the lead lap. Oh, this pit road is about to be as busy as a McDonald's drive through I mean, everybody's going to be down there. But look at this. There's 27 to go, and you can go 24 on a tank of gas, right? Well, but caution laps will caution save you fuel. fuel but so. you need some for the green-white checkers if that comes out for overtime. Larry's calculator's burning up, I can tell. Yep. Depends on how long I it takes to clean that up. Let's pit four tires, pack it full of fuel. Live in the moment right now. I agree takes with that. Takes the heat off the crew chief, and the, the pressure's on the pit crews now. Well, for the third time today, the Toyota Camry TRD, all new this year, gets a chance to pace the field. Remember, no stage breaks on the road courses this year. And the strategy we've seen today has been very interesting, especially with Tyler Reddick uh, starting out with one strategy, and now it appears flipping to another. But, Larry, th I guess this stop will just put everybody in the same bucket. It, it, it does, Mike. And, and again, to Kurt's point, we're a little bit shy of the fuel window, but they're probably going to run one or two more caution laps. So, yeah, just make sure we're mistake-free, pack it full of fuel. When we were looking at, I need to save you, you need to save me six laps, no can do. Save me a lap, now nah, we're talking. I might be able to do that inside this race car. And isn't what you guys taught me when I watched the broadcast a lot, it's a cautions, breed <laughs> cautions. Isn't that a hot thing going on? A little early for that. Is it too soon? A little early. Wait for the restart to hit soon. us with that one. <laughs> it's out. There is no way that's the last caution in my opinion. Here are the pit crews and their rank this season for pit road performance. Ian Byron's on that list. Larry, uh, we know you need fuel. What about tires, two or four? Uh, you know what? I got fired after Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's pretty simple here. Four. Okay. If you leave before I get all four on there, I'm coming back out there and get you. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling that burn from inside here. You fired yeah. yourself. You, you didn't get fired. You fired and you yourself. You know what? I should have. <laughs> Gunther would have fired me on Monday. <laughs> that was so funny. Might not have taken until Monday. <laughs> Empty seat on the plane going home. You know, with Reddick pitting and, and pitting later, he's going to be able to, here's another tidbit, probably going to be able to take less fuel and get out even faster, helping that stop where everybody else has to wait on, on that max fuel. That's going to be something that's interesting to watch here as well. Whoa.
Larry, would anybody stay out? Pace card. We've been watching Joey Logano. Remember, he yes. pitted lap 38. The minute the caution came out, he started saving fuel. We've been watching yeah. his throttle trace. And there he goes. You're right. Jamie. Alex Bowman in the 48 been running top 10 all day long. Remember, he finished second here a year ago. Four tires. They told him twice. Wait on fuel. Wait on fuel. There goes the second can there, Regan. Tyler Reddick, he has been getting better as the day goes on. Needed lateral grip. The adjustments have been good. Just a little bit more in a water bottle as it's extremely hot out here right now. The 99 of Daniel Suarez, a great run in third place. Car was tight earlier. It's too free for him right now, sliding the back just a bit. And the 24 of William Byron, that run the first time he started losing forward drive. Tyler Reddick. Beats the field out of the pits. Here's your race off pit roads. by Ram. Almendinger had trouble. Lost a lot of spots back there. So as the field forms up out of the pits, we'll take you Fox side by side. 26 laps to go. T-Mobile knows whether you break down in the middle of nowhere or get a flat tire on the edge of somewhere. People everywhere trust AAA to get them back on the road. And AAA trusts T-Mobile to be their exclusive wireless partner. Because T-Mobile covers more highway miles with 5G than anyone. So with AAA's nationwide fleet connected on T-Mobile, the middle of nowhere is a lot closer than you think. Ram owners have heart for being fearless, determined, and bold. That's why it's time for you to be a Ram. Now with 0.9% financing for 60 months, get an average 11,600 in finance savings on our most popular models. We got the house! <laughs> yeah. Pods handles the driving. Pack at your pace, store your things until you're ready, then we deliver to your new home, across town or across the country. Pods, your personal moving and storage team. For great views, go to Kansas. For unforgettable views of action-packed racing, go to Kansas Speedway. With a premier facility that gives fans what they want, how they want to see it. We're racing in Kansas. And with a Saturday doubleheader, a Sunday Cup Series race, and great deals on kids' tickets, the views will get better all weekend long. Get your tickets today at kansasspeedway.com. Make some noise! Fox tomorrow. It's the iHeartRadio Music Awards with host Lenny Kravitz. And it all happens live. Change, change, change. With Innovator Award recipient Taylor Swift and performances by Icon Award recipient Pink, Coldplay, Kelly Clarkson, Keith Urban, Pat Benatar, and Neil Geraldo, Lotto, Money Long, Cody Johnson, and more. Thank you, iHeartRadio. I love you guys. The iHeartRadio Music Awards tomorrow live on Fox. When we call something NASCAR legends, you best know we mean it. Twenty-six laps to go at Circuit of the Americas. Time for our Credit One Bank ones to watch. Clint, who you got? Almendinger all the way. Came in third, fifteenth. Now had a bad pit stop. If anybody can do it, AJ can. I'm gonna go with Reddick. He's guy. He's gonna be the rabbit once he clears these couple front runners. I go with Logano. He's in a different strategy, and you never know if it comes to him. Yeah, I'm looking at William in the 24. I think that he's in a position now. He's on equal tires with the 45. He hasn't been that way in quite some time. Uh, hopefully, he can have a little extra pace. Well, I'm looking at the track house cars. Uh, Suarez and Chastain won two of the road races here last year. Let's see what they've got in this final run to the checkered flag. 26 to go, and those are your Credit One Bank ones to watch. I suppose with seniority, you get to pick two yeah. cars. Is that was that what just happened? Picked here? a whole organization there, Mike. <laughs> Thought we had to pick one. What? Who, did, who, who died and left you, boss? <laughs> <laughs> I just gave you respect for the seniority. It's all good. It's all good. All right, they'll come to the Geico restart zone. Oh my! That's Harrison Burton up front. Now he is in second. He has no first gear. Uh, we're told. And here they come. 
Logano, Burton, Redding, Cody Ware up there, William Byron, Suarez, Chastain, and they're on it. And here we go. Oh boy. Whoa. Look at this. All the way down to pit lane on the inside. Lock him up. Oh, the 45 overshot turn one. Uh, Six no. wide. Right. Great move. He was Bold just smart. Move. Smart staying out of it, going wide. Interesting. Wow, that is such a cool view. You know, and that's exactly what Logano couldn't afford to do. He needed to come off of turn one in that lead and didn't. That was Brian Campy up on the box for William Byron. Former IndyCar champion winning lead engineer. I like your pick, Mike. Chastain, new life for him. Oh, Reddick sends it. He loves those braking zones. That's got to be where the lap time and the majority of the lap time is coming from, is all these braking zones into 1, 11, and 12. So in qualifying, the difference that I saw between Byron and Reddick, Byron won the pole, and his Chevy seemed to have more speed down the straightaways. Reddick would eat him up in the braking zones. All right, well, wow. Nice. Tell you who didn't, Suarez. Big time dive bomb, couldn't get it slowed down, shot off the racetrack. But this is again the, the who's who of the road racing group. I mean, Byron, I, I would have thought he had a top five and a win by now, but we've got Reddick, we've got Chastain, Bowman, Suarez, and Dylan's always a little sneaky. And then Bell won the Robo last year. I mean, this is the, the normal, <laughs> the usual suspects. You see Almendinger on the inside there trying to dig out of that hole. Yeah, he's got his work cut out for him for sure. Thirty-four cars on the lead lap. Coming to twenty-four to go. Thought we'd seen more rooting and gouging and throwing fenders and slamming doors, but it was fairly civilized again on that restart. There's still a long way to go. I mean, you see 24 up there, but that's that's 3.41 miles attached to 24 laps. So here's the replay, and, and I would have thought Reddick, with that Monster Energy claw to the inside, would have just cut, turned, and left, but he missed the corner. Yeah, just too deep. Yeah, he flat out right handed here. the lead back to those guys. And they were six wide in the back. Wow. So we've got some radio chatter from earlier. Uh, drivers and spotters talking about restarts from one of the earlier cautions. Uh, we'll begin with spotter uh, Stevie Reeves. Yeah, we're, we're in the middle of like four wide right there. They're all coming up the hill, and we only see the roof, so, so that'll help. Yeah, that particular restart, he actually had clear all the way to the bottom if you wanted to. But I know you can't tell from them driving up the hill at you. Well, I'll tell you, are on this restart, maybe get a little bit more distance, but I don't want to take a bunch of risks now. Or fast, if we have speed track. Absolutely, buddy, you got it. So, yeah, let it sort out. Just work on your aggression as we go. And um, you're a good road racer, man. Believe in yourself. You can do this. That was from Jordan Taylor earlier in the race, and it was spot on for what we saw right off the bat. Trying to be patient, take care of that car, because he knew it was fast. Aggression's the name of the game of these boys. They don't play. Sixth place here. Suarez and Bell, who went to victory lane the last time we were on a road course at the Charlotte Roval. Xfinity fastest lap of the race. Uh, we mentioned it when it happened. Tyler Reddick, 92 and a half miles per hour average. Todd Gilliland firing off on uh, fresh tires, 92.3. Byron Bush Suarez. Man, I don't know if he's going to have enough, Kurt. Byron run a 213.71. Reddick, 213.11. So fast in that 45 car. 
You know what happened with that last run was that the 45, when they aborted the whole situation, they might not have been totally full on fuel. We know now that they had to pack it full of fuel, and the balance might have changed here on the short run. But these are the two guys that sat on the front row. These are the two guys that have been setting the pace. We've now got the two fastest cars running one, two, with a long way to go. This, this is going to be a sword fight. It's going to be a gunfight. It's going to be a knife fight. But it's a matter of when you pull out those little weapons to, uh, to get the advantage. Or you just do it right now. Chase went it. Oh, here goes <laughs> right to the inside, like you said, right now. And crossing right over is Byron. Perfect crossover. They're now going to be side by side down this whole straightaway. And it's like, who's going to outbreak whom? And I think the 45 is going to try to stick it on the outside here because he'll have the inside for turn 13. Took the words out of my mouth. That's what I was going to say there. Not only do you have to outbreak him, strategizing who has a track position, ah, third line on the exit. He and let him go. An opportunity for Chastain to close there. Not sure he quite made the most of it, but. See those two cars yeah, ahead, right. side by side. Yep, there's the one. He likes this. Reddick loves to be on the inside there. And now you're going to cross back under? Sure as heck did. Over. I love that section of the racetrack. <laughs> Look at this. Now what? they're back side by side, the opposite side, but the 45 will have the inside all the way through the carousel. Four different opportunities in a row to cross each other back over. Can he shake him? Order. He didn't shake him. I'm him here. He now Byron's not. got the advantage. That's good race. And they are racing each other with a lot of respect right now. <laughs> Can the 45 cross back under? I'm gonna try. And he's not gonna quite get there. Chase, what do you think? Is it a little too soon for this kind of uh, kind of back and forth, or you just take it where you can get it? No, I definitely don't think it's too soon, and for a couple of reasons. You know, one, as you see, Tyler trying to get back to the inside of William, but again, he's going to be in a bad spot for coming back down the hill. But I think you want control of the race because the longer you're running behind somebody, the, the hotter your tires are get, and you're making it harder for you to make that pass later on down the road. So I think you want to get it done while you can. I think that's why you see Tyler pushing so hard to do it but it is it is interesting watching him exit 11 and coming on the front straightaway that guy on the inside is at such a disadvantage because of the grip that the paint has um, and those guys want to get out there to that paint to help them get down those straightaways all right here's that turn eight nine reddick's there 10 is the fastest corner on the track right here and down into 11. You're spot on, though, Kurt. Do this Reddick is so position. much do faster under brake. Do not waste fuel. Under not give track position. Do not waste fuel. Keep this end of the racetrack, he's just so hard to keep behind you. Hey, boys, three-horse race now. I mean, Chastain was right there at the corner. Didn't get as good a launch off uh, of turn 11, but uh, if, if these guys keep running side by side, it'll be a three-car race. Watch how much better he can get in the corner than William. It's been that way all day long. And now can he close the door? Can he shove him off into the white paint area? Yes. yes. Now if you, you got to protect him. If you get hit from behind, you got to be ready for the hit from behind. This is a tough section to run away from somebody. Such slow corners, it's easy for somebody to come back and, and bump you from behind. What's Reddick's right. heartbeat now? How about 184? He is pumping. Wow. I think he might have finally found just enough wiggle room to try to break away. Look at come right back down after we got that lead. Whew, I feel better. And now Byron's under pressure from Chastain. So now Byron's got to look in the mirror and try to still chase down Reddick and hit his marks. Let's see if Chastain's as clean as the way the other two raced. Behind Chastain is Alex Bowman with a little unfinished business with Chastain from last year's finish here. Exactly right, but that shows you again Bowman putting himself in position. I mean, he's always there. He's like that stealthy guy that always shows up at the end of these races. Among our road course ringers, Jordan Taylor's worked his way back up into the top 20. Jensen Button, 27th. Kimi Raikkonen is 29th. Connor Daly, 36th. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F-Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend, haul, or tow. Just about anything, anywhere. 
That's because they're built Ford tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Because this isn't just about our capability. It's about yours. People throw around legend a little too freely these days. Legends are legends for a reason. It's why most are never called it. A legend in this sport is about 75 years of going fast and all the unforgettable moments that fill those years up. So after all this time, when we call something NASCAR legends, you best know we mean it. Dude, what are you doing? I'm protecting my car. That's too much work. WeatherTech is so much easier. Laser measured floor liners up here, seat protector and cargo liner back there. Nice. Out here, side window deflectors and mud flaps and the bump step to keep the bumper dent free. Cool. It's the best protection for your vehicle, new or pre owned. Great. But where do I order? WeatherTech.com. Mmm, your morning coffee. Hot, delicious, comforting. But by the third or fourth cup, your stomach might not feel so good. If that sounds like you, replace your afternoon cup with 5-Hour Energy. It's perfect for when you're feeling coffeeed out. Coffee in the morning, 5-Hour Energy after. Your stomach will thank you. Discover 5-Hour Energy. This spring, explore everything Fox Nation has to offer for $1.99 a month when you sign up for a yearly plan. Experience new stories that will renew your faith. Get Fox Nation for $1.99 a month when you sign up for a yearly plan. Available for a limited time. Saturdays, baseball's best are showing out on Fox. The biggest games on the best day of the week. MLB on Fox returns Saturday at 3.30 Eastern. Here is where it must be left on the track. And now is when the future is written in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express Card. 20 laps to go. There's Tyler Reddick leading William Byron by seven tenths of a second. Ross Chastain, Alex Bowman right there in the picture. Austin Dillon is fifth. Well, Chase, your horses keep a pace with Reddick out front. You think Reddick's saving? I don't see how he's saving. I mean, I think that's way too close. Maybe if he had five, ten car lengths, but I mean, we just watched him during the break there. He was covering turn one on the braking uh, zone, so I don't think so. I do think what we talked about earlier, though, with, with him running behind William for so long, I feel like that did hurt his tire. So it's almost like broke. Kyle has a toe link broke. Yep. This could be interesting if he can get it around there. I'm in right side. He should be able to. That's a tough, tough break. Again, it might have been from that hit earlier. Finally, just the team wore out. A tough day for Kyle. Fast race car. Got taken out by uh, Bubba Wallace getting into turn 12. Should be able to, to limp that around. Uh, he's only a couple corners away from pit entry. As long as he can get to pit road, we can save a caution here. Uh, Ryan Priest's day just came undone. He got penalized for shortcutting the S's, and on his pass down pit road, he was speeding. So he'll be back. Our Jensen Button in 27. Haley with the Celsius cam giving you these views as they battle for 27. And uh, Kyle Larson has made it to pit road. So we will stay green. Look at him slip sliding around. Yeah, those top four have, have separated themselves, but I mean, there's so much racing still to go. I mean, with 19 laps and the tire drop off, I mean, it, it seemed to have stabilized. 
and the, the pace that we expected for these tires to drop off just never never showed up and I don't know if that's from rubber from the truck series race the Xfinity cars out there filling in the track but man we expected a completely different type of feel with the tires. So next week the Cup Series is on FS1 short track action from Richmond Virginia. The Toyota Owners 400 begins next Sunday 3:30 Eastern. Pre-race coverage starts at 2. That's on FS1 on the Fox Sports app and Larry Mack will be with us in the booth to help break down all of the strategy of short track racing at Richmond. It's a good point, Mike. You know, he's sitting here talking about strategy on a road course. That Richmond race all about strategy. Handy and nice to have Larry back in the booth with us. Help us explain that. Regan. Well, Mike, we've talked about the 16 of AJ Allmendinger and how they have had trouble with the radios all day long. And you see going on the pit sign right now, that is going to say two laps short. They believe they're two laps short on fuel. A lot of nerves up and down pit road right now in terms of if they can make it if this race goes green. Well, I'll tell you, Regan, the guy that needs to read that sign is going too fast to read that sign. <laughs> Look at that sign. One says stay out, one says too short. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're gonna have to have that out in front of him pretty yeah, pretty good to be able to see it. I mean, we are at Coda and it'd be cool to see him hang over that uh, short pit wall like you would see in uh, F1 or MotoGP, but I don't think NASCAR is gonna allow that. They're gonna have to communicate from the pit box side behind the uh, concrete barrier. Well, you say that, let me see if I can get a hold of Chris Rice on that box. Let's just go to the- Oh my, the they already have uh, enough radio trouble. Hey, I can handle this. Hey, Chris Rice, it's Porter up in the booth. You got me? Yes, sir. I got you. You got me? Yeah, I do. Tell me what you're doing there. Driver can't hear you? Nah, he hadn't been able to hear us all day. Um, so we tried to let him know he's a couple of laps short. We had to pit right there and didn't have a really good stop. And, uh, you know, two laps short, he told us to uh, give him a sign. So we're going to show him a sign back like late model days. Old school. I dig it, man. Fast race car. Anybody can get it to here at the end of this thing on these restarts. You see him getting by another one right there. It's him. Yeah, he's a rock star, man. He does a good job. Hey, we have it this kind of day, but, you know, our cup program is just getting better and better. We only have second year yet, so he'll make us better, and we'll get better from this, and we'll be ready for the next uh, road course. So we're just going to keep digging, try to get top ten out of it, and that's what it's all about. Thanks, bud. Almendinger are just passing Joey Logano. And moving back into the top 10. Yeah, it just shows you how costly, you know, these spots are so hard to come by. Costly pit stop for them. Then the fact on the restart, all right, I got to be aggressive. Well, now I can't even hear my spotters. I don't know if I'm outside of 3, 5, 12. I don't know where I'm at. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, when there's one little thing wrong and then it just starts to snowball. But, you know, Almendinger, he's way cool behind the wheel. He doesn't get upset about anything. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's listen in on the 45 talking fuel. We are one lap short along with the 24. The one looks to be the best in the best shape, so we got to keep the lead. Do what we can to save. 17 to go. Chase, are you going to save me a lap? Well, with, the, with those guys being right, right behind, and that's going to be tough. Um, you know, I guess the, the question then comes, do I, I mean, I think, I think trying to save it throughout your run is the best thing you can do just a little bit at a time. Uh, the other option is you run hard and hope for a caution, or you just say, hey, look, we're not going to make it. We have to do what we have to do to, to go from here. But it's so hard to give up the lead. But I do think now he is managing that, that gap, and, and I do think he is saving. But saving a lap under green is going to be a tall order. Absolutely. Where I see him doing that, we talked about, Kurt kept pointing it out, the strong, uh, his strong suit getting into the corner. I think he's backing them corners up, idling that thing in there, shifts over there around the carousel, maybe hit third and be a little bit slower in there. Give up in the areas that don't matter the most. 100%. It's tough, but, but good information there from Billy Scott. The 24 is in the same boat you are. So earlier you know, with 17 to go, that's the best information you can get. 
17 laps remaining in the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix. And all of you at home have a chance to buy two-time Daytona 500 winner Michael Waltrip's Jeep Wrangler. Just go to echopark.com for details. I, hey, I did a walkthrough of that car, too. Not a scratch on it. Had all the fenders on it. Tires weren't wore out. I couldn't believe that was his car. <laughs> Would you buy his car? No, I don't. You. I was going to ask you, are you going to buy it? You know, you're talking so good about it. I think you need a new uh, a new Jeep. No chance on buying buy a, his car. Come on, buy a, buy a Jeep. Maybe. <laughs> All right, Reddick leading William Byron by six tenths of a second, and both trying to save fuel as we go side by side. greater Toyota let's go places I need to try it first as a mom I want to have peace of mind while she's at college I like to know where she is and that she's safe we got a flat tire we pull over it's super dark we're able to reach out to our family members let them know that we were safe I have been in many situations on the road where Verizon was the only reason I got from point A to point B that's why we build the most reliable 5g network in America and number one in JD power awards for network quality 30 times in a row does your phone run on Verizon this is dirt racer Kenny Wallace. The dirt race is back at Bristol in 2023. And once again, it's a night race. It's the Food City Dirt Race, 7 p.m. on Sunday, April 9th. I want to see all my diehard NASCAR and dirt racing fans there. So get your tickets today. Remember, this isn't just any old dirt race. It's a dirt race at Bristol, baby. Baseball's best are showing out on Fox. This is where MVPs are VIPs and where aces always come in pairs. Saturday means it's showtime for Shohei and mealtime for Manny. All the swag, all the salt, and all the slams. The biggest games on the best day of the week. MLB on Fox returns Saturday at 3.30 Eastern. When we call something NASCAR Legends, you best know we mean it. Keep backing it down. 15 laps to go. Tyler Reddick and William Byron have both slowed their race pace. Here's your aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear more driven, showing you the three leaders working their way down here as we're 15 laps from the finish Saturday on Fox baseball's back the Giants battle the Yankees or you'll see the Phillies take on the Rangers Saturday 3:30 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app now the one in 99 are saying that they are right on their number they can make it on fuel well maybe not so the leaders all right, top four, all saving fuel. We'll just start getting some earlier lifts in the braking zone. Need a little bit more. Yeah, we're in can without losing time. Yeah, short shift to help. Shifting will help where you can without losing time. Just do it where you can't lose time. We are here, buddy. If you do a better job than he does, we'll get him there. Lift and coast to save your fuel. That's really close on fuel there, William. Just need a tick more. Really close. Hey, Cap, he's doing a really good job in lifting and braking lifts. That's the key. All right, I, you know I'm lifting. I'm lifting early in the corners. That short shifting that I talked about, but I'm managing that gap. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to give you everything I can until he starts pushing me, trying to manage that gap, 
give up in the areas that I know I can give up that will probably save the most fuel and then over in the S's and stuff like that if he comes to me a little bit so be it but I know if I'm Redick my strong suit is I can get off in the corner a lot deeper than he can you got to use your strengths and the strengths of the breaking zone for the 45 and like you said where through the S's maybe you can cruise on some of the throttle but you got to exit turn nine with your authority and get through ten that way you can gap yourself and not put yourself in a vulnerable spot to be overtake took in a braking zone but all these guys are in the set you know what this is reminding me of back in the day when we used to run sonoma yes. we'd always have this type of race where you had to detune the engine a little bit to save the fuel and then we would be working the throttle and short shifting to try to make sure that we had that extra fuel for the end. Well, the, the year I won out in Sonoma, Curdy, it was me and you that was battling for it, and that's what I was doing. I was managing over in the S's because I knew they didn't matter. You could get to me, but I had to be good, you know, coming off that last corner 10. This one's the one that's, he's going to make it interesting for both of them. He's going to push him hard enough because he's better on fuel. He could run them out of gas. But Alex Bowman plus 1700 there he's in fifth place he's four and a half back having a great season with only one finish out of the top 10 and he was a contender to win it all here last year let's uh, hear about his fuel situation we need uh, another 100 feet in one and 12 another 100 feet in one and 12 the 99 can make it let him go run out of gas let him know it's still not enough in one he needs to lift her up four and one they have committed fully on that 48. That 48 car was running with the top three. He was right in the same screen, the same picture. He's backed off the most. He's going full conservative, running fifth, but he's going to have the best opportunity with fuel while these top three are pushing each other. That's exactly right. They say there's no chance we're going to run those lap times. We're going to run out of gas. Back this thing up. Let them boys go out there and push each other. Chase, how hard is that to do when they tell you if you can't outrun them, outlast them? Yeah, that's a tough one, and I think I think Clint touched on it. You know, the one is in a position where now that they think that they can make it, he's wanting to push those guys in front of him and, and keep them from saving. Alex was in a position where he didn't necessarily have to worry about that. He was at the back end of the pack, so he knew he was short. They said, hey, we're not going to make it, so now he is full-blown save and, and is going to try to get to the end. So, you know, if you're, if you're Tyler, you don't want to give up the lead. And I think William's really just pacing himself off of off of him. And, and I think that uh, I think Ross is, is trying to push those guys, but they're still making great pace. So it's really tough to know. Eight different teams in the top 10 here with 13 laps to go. And the race pace has now fallen off to a little slower than two minutes, 15 seconds. How many times have you done that in your career? So you start saving fuel and you're going faster and you're yelling at you. No, I said save fuel. Like, man, I, I'm rolling in the corners better. I'm in my groove and I've found better pace doing this. I mean, this is a nail biter. This is so difficult to manage a race as a leader and you're trying to save fuel and you're this close to the end. There is so much going on inside the car. Regan? Well, guys, just another thought and possible strategies also here. The eight car of Kyle Busch was running in 12th at the time, knew that they could not make it. They were going to be short, so they went ahead and split this end of the race in half and basically already made their pit stop under green. He's just going to go as hard as he can for the end of the race and help hope that everybody runs out in front of him. <laughs> Lots of different agendas here. Gunther, you don't have to worry about fuel at all in your race? No, not at all. Uh, we have to worry about it sometimes if you use too much fuel. You know, in the end, you need to have some fuel left in the fuel tank for the samples, FIA samples. So sometimes you have to uh, to slow them down a little bit, but otherwise, uh, it's more to save tires. You have to save, you know, just that you get to the end uh, for the degradation. But fuel, normally not an issue. You know, one thing that we haven't mentioned, and I, I just it just dawned on me, is there's SMT, there's live data on steering, throttle, and brake trace, and you can get a live mile per gallon usage per lap. And so if you're at a certain point two, three over, or you need to get to the other side of the scale, the team can tell you lap by lap. Wow. Let's get an update on Bowman from Jamie. And Alex Bowman fifth right now. The team just told him run 80% wherever you can. We're going to be about a handful of laps short. They also heard that the 99 was good on fuel, so they let him go by. So certainly keeping an eye on Bowman, who seems like they're down at least five laps short right now. Jamie, he 
took off. He went to the whip on that horse off of four and taken off. He's running 213.80s. These leaders are 215.60s. We have some drama developing. Real quick on the Bowman, 80%. That means 80% throttle. That means you're never even going wide open. You're leaving that last 20% closed off so you can save fuel. But yeah, this <laughs> the Suarez showing up to the party is really going to bring in a fiesta. Well, it's not just going to be Bowman. And, there he uh, is. Fire off. Is by he Byron. out? Surely he might He's slid up in that dirt, I think, hurt. Yeah, he might have. He might have been off uh, line a little bit in turn eight. <laughs> Suarez <laughs> gives the boot to Chastain, and here he goes. They open the door up for Byron to get back. No. Nope. This is interesting. Trackhouse is, was the winner here last year. They've got two cars, second and third right now. And the leader from 2311 is trying to nurse the fuel. Well, let's let's let the truck house there take the gloves off, boys. Byron slid oh. up in the leader Reddick's dirt. The leader really went through the dirt big time, threw it on Byron's tires and slid him up out of the groove. Been there. That's one of those unwritten rules, right? That's one of those little things that drivers do that people don't know about much. There's just that little bit of boost there. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. It's like, I've been given the green light. Oh, my. Oh, oh. Brad Kozlowski. That's uh, looking for a safe That's harbor, and I don't think he's going to get there. Nope. Oh. That changes everything. 12 laps to go. <laughs> caution out. Lap 56. I can't believe I'm saying this. Usually I'm pumped up for cautions, man. That bummed me out. Boy, the suspense was getting after that, wasn't it? That no. was getting big with the fuel thing. Everything starts new now. Now it's you know, back yeah. on, oh, yeah, exactly. on your yeah. pit crew. The last little fine adjustments. Back to a race here with, what, nine probably to go. Yeah. Well, Larry, what does that do for us? Am I taking fuel, all of it? This is going to get interesting. I'll tell you when we come back from commercial break. How about that, Cliff? <laughs> Last year on the uh, road course expansion or explosion, first career cup wins for these three drivers. And Tyler Reddick doubling up. Christopher Bell, the most recent winner. You know, we were talking strategy before the caution and before the break. And I'm looking at Kyle Busch, uh, who was on pit road 11 laps after everybody else uh, on the lead lap. Uh, he would not have to stop to go the distance, and there may be others uh, that could probably stay out and not pit Larry and ride it out. Yeah, I mean, we've got 32 drivers on the lead lap, Mike. We're going to go back racing probably with about nine to go. And they have 13 green flag laps. There, there's no doubt the drivers, the crew chiefs, everybody wants to pit and put four fresh tires. But I can almost promise you there's going to be a number of them that roll the dice and try it, especially those in the back. As I've always said, if you follow the leader, you know what? You're going to follow the leader. <laughs> I like that, Larry. And uh, one thing that, that Kyle Busch has, he already has a W. He's got a win this year. So you may as well just go for the gamble and go start up on that front row if you can get it. I think there's, well, let's see, Denny Hamlin, Kimi Raikkonen, uh, Ryan Priest, Cody Ware, all in the same situation. Uh, they pitted about the same time as Kyle Busch, so I would expect most of them to stay out. That's it. I mean, you know, if you stay out, you can't be the lone wolf. I, you'll never make it. But this, uh, these few laps under caution help those leaders gain the fuel back that they needed, but they've got nothing for a green-white checker. I mean, you can try two tires or something. What tire, what two do you put on it? I mean, try to set yourself apart. Man, I just want a good pit stop. Get me a fast pit stop. There we go. Everybody. Everybody at the front is coming. Jamie? Alex Bowman's the first pit box here. He gave information to the team. I haven't gone that hard. It makes you wonder if they'll take rights only. They don't have to wait on the fuel. You see, they'll use that one can there. They used a code word. Yep, right now they just called four tires for the 48 Regan. Well, the one car, Ross Chastain, they've been making gains on that car all day long. At one point earlier today, was chattering the rear tires, but he's happy with it at the moment. The 45 of Tyler Reddick needs a little bit more rear lateral grip, and the 99 of Daniel Suarez said, just give me a little bit of extra air pressure for the end of this run. 
So here's your race off pit road. Oh no. Sponsored by Ram. Big Russell. time trouble on that Chastain car way back there. Holy smokes. So Reddick is the first off pit road, but he will not be the leader. At least five cars stayed out. Christopher Bell, Kyle Busch. Here's a look at the Chastain uh, pit stop. Hamlin, Raikkonen, and Priest all stayed out. Oh, that right didn't have that nut on. Jack that thing back up. It's not on. Got it. His teammate Suarez had trouble too. Not a good pit stop for Trackhouse Racing. They were some of the, they're always some of the best on pit road. So Tyler Reddick will come out 12th in line. Uh, this will cycle through. We'll, we'll update. Uh, they now have him sixth. Five cars stayed out. Reddick will be sixth. Byron seventh. Suarez eighth. Bowman ninth. Austin Dillon tenth. The five drivers who stayed out once again Christopher Bell, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Kimi Raikkonen, Ryan Priest. Interesting. Interesting. Um, if I remember right, I, I think that's one of the strategies that. You know, the 20 car had last year when I was teammates with those guys is there was some big gambles that they would throw down on road courses and we're seeing a little bit of that with Denny Hamlin of two cars behind talking about this choose cone rule this is something new for road courses chase I want your opinion on this if I'm Reddick and I've got some ground to cover quick with these guys on old tires which lane do I want to be in at the top of that hill in one that's a great question <laughs> and I don't even know that he has the answer to it right now because you know, uh, he's going to be starting what around 10th or 12th, somewhere in that, somewhere in that area. Um, well, maybe not that far back, but you know, I, I think he's in a position where you just don't want to get crashed. He has the upper hand. He's in a position where he's going to be able to outlast these guys for these final six or seven laps, get through turn one and two, make the ground you can make, but don't hurt your car in the process. And with his pace, he's going to be in a good position. Two fellows I want to watch are Denny Hamlin and Ryan Priest. They both overcame penalties, and they both, uh, I think, fit the adage, I'd rather be lucky than good any day. This race has fallen right in their laps. And Larry informs me the 11 and the 41 only have one green flag lap on their tires. So, of course, they stayed out. Boy, Kurt. Are they going to get through turn one? <laughs> <laughs> Some of them will. Yeah. I'm looking at timing and scoring, and it shows that Raikkonen last pitted with the same grouping of cars. So Bush, Hamlin, Raikkonen, and Priest, according to this data. So this is uh, this has got all the makings of what a typical NASCAR race has at the end. And this is the, the survival on which lane you end up in and what kind of luck you have. I mean, a car to watch that I'm going to just stay glued to is Raikkonen. Like, well, yes. this is a show, boys. This is this is what you've built up for. So it's it's going to be pretty wild with all these different cars and these in, in which lane they chose. Bell's the one with those 13 lap tires that have big time uh, disadvantage. You know, the guys that pick behind him, you need to spit him out as fast as possible. All right, Gunter, Kimi Raikkonen. One green flag lap on his tires. He's sitting here in fourth place. What are we going to see? See if he can stay cooler, you know. I think he can. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't get into trouble. But uh, I think he's uh, a veteran enough of racing that he can that he st stays out of trouble. But you never know with these guys. When they got the possibility, they try to be there. And Kim is one of them. I mean, he was a world champion. So, well, now you know why every seat up at Turn One has been sold, and they've just told Raikkonen on the radio, "Be aggressive on this restart." Be aggressive and be ready for contact. That's what you have to be as an open wheel guy. Be ready for contact with these stock cars. Here we go. Man, a great jump for Bell. Denny didn't get a good jump at all. Reddick already the hands inside. Great restart for Reddick. Look at him crazy. All over the place. Right oh, down goes way outside Dillon. and one car around Austin Dillon. Well, more than one car around. That uh, is, is that Chastain? Chastain? Chastain as well. Uh, well, that was ugly. Chastain's broke left rear. Almondinger was involved as well. We may have another caution here. Look at that. Reddick to Redick the point. Was able to grab the lead from that third row. That's incredible. I mean, just for the breaking zones that he's been able to capitalize on. Caution. I was going to say, they're probably going to be cautioned with debris and cars not rolling. They'll have to remove Ross Chastain's car. 
Well, let's re rack him. Remember, he had a bad pit stop, but that's how he ended up back there. You'll see that light blue number one come into view here. Love this drone footage. You see the baby blue car in the far right? And there's going to be about five guys to his inside. Four into the, I think it's a 16 that got into the three. Then on the outside, Eric Jones gets into Chastain, spins him around. We'll watch from uh, Ryan Blaney's Ford on board camera. What do you do here, Gunther? Hope and pray. Yeah, that's the only thing you can do huh? in the middle of there. That's the only thing you can do. All right, Kurt, now you can say it. Cautions breed cautions. Okay, all right, all right. Yep. <laughs> Denny out there off the racetrack. And Almendinger with a flat right front and Ford, maybe more. Ford got into the back of, I think that was who that was, into the back of him. That put him into the back of the 31, or the three and turned him around. Laps to go in Austin, Texas, after this on the restart. Thanks, bro. Eight laps to go. There's what they're racing for. The Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix trophy in the shape of Circuit of the Americas. Eight laps and at least one restart to go. Here's why we're under caution. Restart, turn one. I love this aerial shot. Uh, we've got Reddick in row three. You gotta stay in line till the start finish line, which is right there under Echo Park. Boom. Makes the move to the inside. And look at this. He just swallows these guys up in that front row. Denny didn't get a good jump in front of him. There was a big gap between Bell and Denny. Gave him an opportunity to pounce on Danny early and then watch how fast and deep he gets into the corner compared to the competition. Listen to this. Just knows how to put it right on that edge. Love it. And then Kimi seemed to survive that restart. He only lost two spots in yep. that full exchange, so not bad. So coming to the choose, you heard Reddick lock it up just a bit when the engine went silent there for just a bit. The rears were locked up, but uh, he had full control, and boy, nobody outbreaks Tyler Reddick around here. And one of the key things that's really tough to explain, though, but they are not at the normal speed as you would have on a regular lap. That They're restarting at 45 miles per hour, so you can go in deeper than you think on a restart. So have we seen our last caution flag? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let's check in with Shannon and Jamie in the Charlotte studio. Well, like you heard Kurt Busch say it, right? Caution breeds cautions. If we can make it through that turn one without a caution, these guys can get going. What are you expecting to say, Jamie? Well, Tyler Reddick obviously has the racing control, has, has the front row, but the guy right behind him, William Byron, has been a factor in this race as well. Is he going to get a little more aggressive on this restart? We know how good Tyler Reddick has been in the breaking zone. The guys have been talking about it, but what's William Byron going to do? Those guys have certainly been the class of the field today. It's going to be fun to see how this race plays out. If we can get through turn one, Kurt, don't say it again. <laughs> I will try not to, but I do know that everybody gets meaner and meaner when there's single digit lap counts left. So with eight to go, we'll see. All right, let's listen on William Byron's radio. You know, do what you need to do to get around those guys and run down that 45. That's our objective here. I got that to let you do your job. Hey, William, go out there and show to yourself the badass you are. The four. Now that is the Max Pappas, <laughs> the Mad Max that we know on the radio to William Byron. I mean, this is how much of a block are you going to throw? What is uh, William going to dish him? This this is when it gets me. This is this is when NASCAR is at its finest. It's a very different etiquette, Gunther, when it comes down to the end of these races. Yeah, you just go for, and it's a much safer uh, way to do it as well. You know, in a phone car, you cannot do these things, but yeah, it's just part of the etiquette, as you say. When it gets to to, uh, to, to get to win, you have to do what you have to do. You know? Yeah, but if you end up tearing that thing up, well, you, you have to make that call. That's what you do on that show, right, Mick? I got to call Gene. <laughs> Pace car is in. And here they come. Reddick and Bell. Toyota's up front with Truex. First Chevy is Byron in fourth. The first Ford is Priest in seventh. Back to green. Step one, get a decent jump. Step two, check near, block. Step three, survive. Get your mark here. He missed the corner. Yep. Ah, 
sure did. Williams on there. He's, he's like, did he clear him? Yes. William got him. Now the race is on. And there's new players. Bush. Kyle Bush. Yes, sir. Bunch of new players have jumped in. Truex. Takes me right back to that turn and exactly listening to what you were saying, Kurt. Overdrove that corner, looked in the mirror, saw oh, the clock. Somebody got dumped. Bell. Got it back going. Took a hit, got spun around, and restarts. Oh, and he was oh, probably just got it to Jordan Taylor. Taylor right there. There we go. You know Tyler's not going to back down. Hey, there's that boy in that 24 car. Had some experience door-to-door -door battles. Had a good one yesterday. Wasn't quite the right time to toss it in there. So we have a race on our hands. This is going to be epic all the way down to the end. The car with the most straightaway speed leading the car with the best braking performance. Turn 12, sharp left-hander. And now you go into the stadium section, two rights. Two lefts, a bunch of different apexes and mix. Oh, oh. oh, we'll slip up. It's too far away to throw anything in there right now. Truex looking inside for third. Yeah, it doesn't look like Kyle Busch can maintain the pace that he needs to to hang with those top two, so Truex is going to be all over him here. AJ Allmendinger has taken his car to the garage. Such a hard thing to stay out of that mirror, especially when you know the car behind you, strong suit, is getting into the corner, Kurt. Suarez coming back with Bowman right in his draft. Truex splits them. Behind them, Michael McDowell, Ryan Priest, Kimi Raikkonen, and Joey Logano in the top ten. Say that again, who's running ninth? Yeah. That's right. Oh, well, now I just got past him. Oh. Darn. We break lock up there. <laughs> Suarez body slam Truex. Not going to be happy with that. See if he retaliates. Meanwhile, back at the front. These guys are just mirroring each other. One's fast in one section. One's fast in another section. This is where Tyler usually is at his best through here. And it's like William seems to be better on the other side of the track. Here comes that breaking zone. I think he's close enough yet. I don't think so. He's just going to be focused on corner exit here. William is doing such a good job of, of making sure he's good on the, on the corners that count. And what I mean by that is that 10 that sets up that breaking zone in 11, got off of 11 goods, going to see another, got another good gap. No way he could dive bombing from that far back. Getting into another passing zone at 12. Yeah, it's that magical distance right there. Tyler knows that he can't make up that much distance on a braking zone. So it could be a little cat and mouse. Man, these guys are working it. It's going to come down to a big slip up or something that, that costs time on the 24 or the 45. What they are doing, though, is driving away from the competition. Yeah, it does look like the eight car of Kyle Busch stabilized. He's now holding third with a, with a decent gap. Two best cars. No question of two best cars. They were on the front row. Two best cars of the weekend going at battle at here at the end of the race. It's what it's all about. It's the way it's supposed to be. Austin Dillon shortcut the S's. He'll get a pass through. Trying to force one another into a mistake. If you're Redick, you make that thing, show him everything, and look at Byron moving around, trying to keep that wake out of him. Getting away from him, at 2.12.95. Pretty impressive lap out of William Byron in the lead, 2.13.17 out of Redick. That is Byron's fastest lap of the race. That's impressive. You know, now the pay window's open. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And him rising to that occasion, what he's been able to do this year over the others. What did Max Pappas just tell him? Show him what a badass you are. I he's like it. it. I like it. Whoa. There's the pressure. He's close this time. This is a 
setting up for a passing zone. He's we even got loose. Oh yeah. He's not gonna hesitate on this one. No, sir. See, now it's a matter of do you keep your momentum, keep that minimum speed up through the apex? And he's able to close the door. It was almost like he brake checked. He knew he was one to do a crossover, and he brake checked and waited on that. Slick move by Reddick. I like it. I did that one time on Jimmy Johnson at Martinsville, and I think I did it by accident. Let's see if he's able to hold him off. Kai dive bomb block. Reddick moves back out. Got him in the mirror. There you go. You can get that exit. With him. You can use up all that exit right there. This is where it gets front bumper to back bumper time. Does he hit him? Not yet, huh? Man, you may have to, to keep him at, at arm's length here. That's what I was just thinking. You might have to hit him just to kind of just rattle his cage a little bit. Just make him a little squirrely. Reddit could try to slide away here. He may not be able to. I mean, now that he's got that clean air. That's what I was saying. The 24 might need to pull, pull a little trick out of the bag. Well, and that Better trick is rough him up. I mean, let's just face it. You're going to have to, if, if you get close enough to him, rough him up and, and rattle his cage. But that's it. Like, if you don't have that next opportunity to do it, you lost your chance. So this, this will be an interesting lap to see what kind of lap time these guys are going to lay down. That's a lot of discipline right there out of Reddick. He backed that corner up, overdrove one for that restart, and handed that lead to William Byron. What do you think, Chase Elliott? What do you got left in your little bag of tricks? Oh man, I, I mean, I think for for Tyler, obviously, you know, not getting through turn one was was not good. But he's been outpacing William. I thought he did a really good job of being patient with him and and not running him over. And I think for that reason, William's gonna gonna pay that respect back. I mean, Tyler did race him clean. He got the pass and and is doing exactly what he needs to do. I think it's gonna be really hard for William to get to get back by. I think his best chance was to to hold him off. But uh, some great racing for the lead, though. Exactly right. I think there was a lot of respect between those two. It's something that we didn't quite expect, but when you think about it, Byron with his wins, Reddick likes to be caution is out. What? I saw it on the wall there. Debris. Sure is. We got some debris. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> Clint, did you throw dirt down again? Just when we thought we had this set <laughs> I didn't mean to say it earlier. I'm sorry about that caution, bring caution thing. All right, stay poised. <laughs> oh, oh, there it is. Probably that, out of the back of the three car. That could be the debris. It's too bad. Austin was doing a good job. Had the track position, got wiped out at the top of the hill on the, on the restart there. In this game, in this day and age, you have to be ready for a caution at any time. There's nothing that ever closes out the race as cleanly and easily. Dylan would have been the free pass car. He was one lap down. So I don't believe there will be one. Now the haymakers start coming out. That'll leave us with 31 lead lap cars. I think Suarez is going to be one to watch on this restart. He's been very aggressive. He's been able to dive bombs. Car makes good grip. <laughs> Oof. So it looks like we'll go to overtime. Uh, but first, let's show you where Tyler Reddick took the lead for William Byron. Yeah, that starts out of his little favorite section, 8, 9, that's 10, and then just outbreaking him down into 11. Started with William. He, he forced William to make a mistake. William slid up at least a little bit, gave him that momentum advantage, took it. Very true. Yeah, he did have a couple bobbles in that. But now, like, man, as a racer, Again, here's that pass for the lead. So he had him up out of the groove, got a little bit loose, got under him. And then, like we we're saying, may have held him out a little longer than he expected. Right there. And then go. Those are those little things that sometimes drivers are able to, to manipulate. But, man, road course racing, NASCAR these last few years, if it's under five laps to go, it's almost like we're done racing. It's now survival. 
Well, yes, because that racing re with respect thing is going to go right out the window when we go to overtime. Green, white, checker. Let's remind you of what happened last year. AJ Allmendinger. Bowman, the leader. But Chastain sends Almendinger into Bowman and drives away to victory. Well, that was the aftermath, and I know A.J. was upset, but he, A.J. moved him getting into 12. That was all kind of a back-and-forth situation, and obviously Chastain made the last punt that, uh, that finished him off, but that's exactly what can happen and probably will happen right here at the end. Tyler Reddick, radio. On these restarts, I just can't find a good spot to get into one. You have 10 more. Think about what you were using for your marker and just look around for something else that might be uh, more notable. Got a couple of caution lines here to check it out. What he means by that, you just don't use the same, you know, obviously your markers and everything else aren't the same getting into one as they are in race conditions. Trying to find that spot of where too far is in a sweet spot. And oh, by the way, you're looking in the rear view mirror to make sure that somebody's not gonna run you over. A lot going on there. Yeah, he needs to build up that confidence. I mean, he came from the third row back one time and left with the lead. Now he's the leader. He just needs to know and feel it from then where he needs to break and where he needs to cut and get the heck out of there. Look at those restart ranks this season. William Byron fourth in restart performance. Tyler Reddick 10th. And a quick update on our road course ringers. Kimi Raikkonen uh, holding his own there at 17th. Jordan Taylor is rebounded for 20th. Jensen Button is 26th. They are all on the lead lap. I mean, Raikkonen was just fourth. <laughs> well, that was a restart or so ago, yes. <laughs> it's crazy how things can change real quick. Well, look at Truex. Look at... Uh, you know, McDowell, Priest, Logano, guys, Briscoe that you didn't see, um, you know, up front at all, all day long. That caution come out untimely and it really laid right in their lap. So we're going to have one more try at it at least because NASCAR's overtime rules provide that we will keep restarting until the leader crosses the line with one lap to go under the green flag. Once that happens, the next flag will end the race. What do you tell your driver right here, Gunther? Not a lot. I mean, drivers, you know, you just say, uh, do the best you can, but they know that. This, uh, I think at this point, to speak with them, I think it's better that they keep their focus on what they need to do. Sometimes less is more, and uh, they know exactly what's going on. I mean, if they've got something to ask, they ask, like Reddick did before, you know, uh, I'm struggling on the restarts, but normally, it's just in these situations when something comes like this, I always leave them alone. Leave okay. them to themselves. I'm coming at you in a different way, then. I'm going <laughs> to ask it again. Which one of them horses you want out there? Which one? Which driver do you want in what car do you want driving for you? I mean, it's between Reddick and, and Byron, I think, at this, uh, at this time. So yep. I, I would say Byron did a better job in the restarts uh, uh, today. You know, when, when, when they were in the front, you know, not uh, when they were behind, Reddick did a good start as well and gained a lot of stuff. But, you know, when you're in the first lane, you need to have the confidence. Yeah. That, is, that is what you have to have. That, what it is all is exactly going into that turn, being confident I can do it. Sometimes right, so, it goes well, sometimes not. So, Chase... Do you want Williams starting next to Reddick or right behind him? I was really just thinking about that, too. And it's interesting listening to your point of view, Gunther, especially just with the way these restarts are different than, than what you see on the F1 side. But if I'm William, I think I really consider second row inside because I think if you're on that front row, uh, if somebody is going to bulldoze uh, Tyler out of the way, which odds are pretty good i think i think tyler's in a really tough spot being the leader uh if you're in the outside of that first row you're going with him and, and you're likely going to be in a lot of trouble too so i think if you're william you think about lining up third and putting yourself on offense and hoping for the best tyler's blown two of these restarts today going wide uh, out of one so that's Sounds a really good like point yeah. yeah whole another strategy all right so uh, tyler reddick got some advice on the radio in line, make your defensive moves there, so 
you don't want to be turning when you get down closer into the corner. You don't want to be turning and changing lanes in a braking zone. Make the defensive move before you start braking, and then just make sure you get back to your, your corner speed. Your corner speed on these restarts has been a little bit more than race laps. That's what leads to uh, not being able to get the exit. Copy, copy. Good advice. Thank you. I like it. That's Billy Scott helping him find that confidence and find tools in his toolbox. Here's the choose sector. And oh, goes back to the outside. Goes to the outside. outside. And it's I, interesting. I think Kyle Busch is in the right spot. I was just going to mention him. <laughs> it's funny you say that because yeah, he has a win. He's got nothing to lose. Right. And that's the, you know, they just both kind of swap cars in a sense. That's interesting. But to calm Reddick down and just give him that bit of confidence, now, like, he just, I know he feels better, and I think he's going to be able to execute it. Kyle Busch was 26th prior to the caution at lap 58. Uh, that was eight laps and a couple of cautions ago. Kyle would have to do exactly what Chase is talking about, though. you got to get to the top of the hill, and you're going to have to give the 45 the boot, 45 in to, to Byron on the outside, and there's your hole. I don't know that Kyle will do that, though. I really don't, unless you have the pressure from behind. I, I agree. I agree completely. And if I'm Tyler in this situation, I feel like he's he's surrounded in front and behind by some drivers who are respectable guys who he's been racing with throughout the day. They've shown each other respect. I don't see any of those guys running through him like like some others might. 99. Daniel Suarez had not seen his mom in several months, had not seen his sister in over a year. But they drove six and a half hours to Austin from their hometown, Monterey, Mexico. They're here for this weekend's race. And they might just be in Ricky Lane. I told you, keep an eye out for him. I think he's the quiet one here with, with a pretty good opportunity if these racers get side by side beating and banging on each other. If it ain't at the top of the hill, it could be through the messes. Don't forget about the dirt. Yeah, Suarez, he won at Sonoma last year, but he likes this stuff. He likes the contact. He likes finding ways to find the new hole and to get out and squirt out into the lead. I mean, he's a wild card for sure. Well, he ain't afraid to make a hole. Nope, not at all. Right now, there's nobody in the top 12 that can't win it. All right, we're going to overtime, sponsored by Greta One Bank. Green, white, checker. First step is you got to get this launch. You're in control, Tyler. Next, you've got to get turn one. Green flag. It's pretty slow. Everybody's right there. Line here. Still in line. All right. Still. Stay. Cut it. Wide. Bush under him. He's going to be okay. Williams way wide. Tyler's got the right line. And Kyle Bush is right there. Exit on around. It. Several cars around in the back. How about that? Now you got Kyle Bush. The car you used to race is now your blocker back there in P2. Yeah. Best case scenario for them. Question is, are these cars going to get cleaned up? A lot of cars around backwards back there. But for Byron, that takes me right back to what I heard Chase Elliott saying. As soon as he said it, I said, boy, that ain't a bad move. It's exactly what Kyle Busch took advantage of. Everybody get back on again. Best case scenario for Tyler Reddick. Down into turn 11. Have Everyone got away from that melee in turn one. So we stay green. Get around here to this white flag if you're Tyler Reddick. Roll, buddy, roll. Nice lead. This is where you're in the car, right, Clint? You're like, no whammies. No whammies. You don't want anything to pop up to create a yellow. You've got a nice gap. You just got to get back to the line and take the white. Ooh, oh, 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 no. That ain't going to be enough. No though. whammies. Can't throw a caution for that. That's where the, there was a caution before. Through the stadium. Going for that debris all over the racetrack, though. It's still green. He's got a nice gap, right, Mike? Yeah. Reddick's maintaining. Yes. Right there at one second. Over Kyle Busch, William Byron, Daniel Suarez, yeah, and the yellow, yellow is out. And I told you, no whammies. I didn't think you could with Blaney and, and the, that there was debris flying out of the back of that thing all over the place. Have to see what's on the racetrack. Uh, there's pretty much a yard sale out there. Well, he's yeah. not the only one with trouble. I That's think that was, was it Priest, Priest behind him? Yeah. Yes. Ooh. 
So Priest ran hard up against somebody. But that front end damage likely oh. blew it on the racetrack, I would say. Yep. Yeah, that thing's ready for the chop yard. Not sure who he hit, but it was a ton. Going to need a lot of carbon fiber to fix that one. Kyle Larson gets the free pass. Let's go back to the restart. I mean, to me, this was a very civilized top three rows. And then if somebody tries to shoot the middle, a lot of door slamming back there. Blaney gets spun around. Oh, oh there's where Priest got turned and yep. hit. And that was the start of the pileup back there. The issue is the funnel fit because the gravel sneaks up on you on the exit of this corner. Watch the gravel way out there, and the car's got to jump back on. Priest, the red car, way on the outside, and he's going to be in trouble right here. He had to do exactly what Kurt was talking about. Had to get back down to stay out of that gravel. Gets turned around. From Ryan Blaney. Oh, that's frustrating. Josh Palicki involved there. Justin Haley's view. He's ready to get this day over with. Yeah, he is. Wow. <laughs> I remember that from last year. That's just, it's like a war zone out there. There's just shrapnel going everywhere. And there's a pair of debris. Billy Scott's got to get his driver set for one more restart. Well, okay. We talked about William Byron, Chase. Now what happens here? He's going to be. Bush is going to stay right there where he's at. You think he'll take that inside lane? I'd be shocked if Kyle didn't take third again on the inside, right? I mean, it worked out great for him that time, and, and I think that he knows that now. I think William's probably kicking himself for not taking the inside of the second row, uh, but... If Kyle does take the front row for whatever reason, de uh, definitely would, would take that second row bottom if you're William. But I just want to point out, it was a lot of respect given on that restart. And to me, as a racer, uh, growing up and watching this stuff, that's how I want to see these races go. I don't want to see somebody, you know, run through there and, and, and push all those guys wide up front just because the front bumpers are, are strong now. I just, I, I really thought that was, that was nice to see that they ran in there hard, they raced clean, and, and they were able to, to get through there in the first couple of rows at least. Yeah. One little key factor that, that Tyler Reddick has going for him is that Kyle Busch has won. William Byron has won a race. That's where you see a little bit of the extra respect is that they have won already this year. If they haven't, you might see something a little different. And it's the chances of wins you can get throughout the year. If, if you're a guy that might have one sliver of a sniff at the lead late in a race and you're not a guy that usually wins races, you're going to take that big, bold move and, and try to dump the guy. Well, it takes me back to the jump, too. You know, Reddick, you heard me say, I thought he slowed them down quite a bit. That was a strategy move on how you're going to get the jump. Do you do something different? You stick to it, you know, trying to that that craftsmanship, gamesmanship, and that is is where the magic is. So making a good decision on your jumps a big, big time importance. All right, first we're going to listen to uh, Kyle Busch's radio about the choose. What you thinking here? Got to stay left. Yep, I totally agree. I'm with him, Randall. If you choose the top, you're kind of leaving yourself vulnerable for that middle lane or getting punted and washed out, and then just totally for entry of two, being out too wide off of one. Well, you know what he's going to do, but I, that's new life for Byron. Again, get that jump, go to that outside, take advantage of it. Drive that boy off in that corner. Jamie? Kyle Busch's crew chief, Randall Burnett, what do you think? You're talking to your driver. You know he's on a little bit older tires than the top five. You think he's got enough to get it done here? Well, I don't know. Obviously, the 45 and the 24 has been the class of the field today, but uh, we got one of the best in the business behind the wheel here, so we'll see what we can make happen. Pretty cool having that spin on the car down here in Austin. Uh, they're based here in Austin, so uh, really good day for them. We've had a lot of fun here. Uh, like I said, that 45 and 24 have been really tough. So we'll see how it goes. Anything can happen at the end of these. I think the guy who restarted third here last year won, so uh, we'll see what happens. All right, Kyle Bush restarting second, Mike. 
That's right. Now, fellas, you talked about drivers who might be willing to take chances, and I'm looking at Daniel Suarez and Michael McDowell. Road course races are their best opportunity to get to victory lane, and they are currently fourth and sixth. They're right in the mix. Well, that would be the road to keep your eye on as far as a full send and making, making the best of what they can. I mean, it again, it's not necessarily racing in a sense. It's more about survival, and there is an art to surviving the right way, and we'll see how this plays out. It's a good run for Truex. Took advantage of, of these cautions coming out. Again, is one of those guys that kind of helped out, right, the, the untimely caution laid in his lap and he took advantage of it. Well, Ryan Priest made repairs, got back on track, but that little choo-choo is not gonna make it to the top of the hill. Nope. That's gonna, it's gonna take a call so, back to Gene. I was I, going to say, uh, yeah. this is not me having to call back to Gene today. You know, somebody else. <laughs> Zippy. High deductible there. Daniel Suarez, uh, audio. Message I got, go P5, force it down left, you know. Remember last night what AJ did, AJ did it yesterday for P5, similar thing, you know. It's all about the exit and launch of one. Stats say to take short roll, but uh, we'll leave it up to you here. Yeah, who told you to take people? There you go. Yep. Inside. Nice shot from our Coke Zero cam on Daniel Suarez. So while they work their way around to restart under overtime for the second time, well, let's take you back. Chaos on lap two. Jimmy Johnson getting turned around. Ty Dillon knocked out of the race in that one, along with the seven-time champion running a partial schedule this year. And then uh, Bubba Wallace. They're getting into Kyle Larson. Good bit of damage there. And Denny Hamlin turns Larson around. He ends up against the guardrail and Wallace out of the race. The funnel. Lap 59. That's like Long Jam City. That's my favorite right now. <laughs> and this is just what happened. The last restart. And we've got shrapnel everywhere. Priest and Blaney damage. Blaney able to repair and continue. Looks like Priest may be done. We need for the to day. sell turn one t-shirts. Kind of like the 16th hole at the, at the golf tournament out there in Phoenix. It's you want to see action, you park your butt up there on turn one. You're going to see all the action you want. Doesn't the Roval sell turn one? Like it's like Tums Mayhem Corner or something. I don't know. It, they have a sponsor for it. Yeah. Yep. That's that's pretty much what we all do on these road courses. We go down to turn one. And <laughs> Lose their minds. <laughs> turn, turn it into ping pong balls. So second try at overtime. Same rules. Green white checker. The leader must take the white flag under the green flag for the next flag to end the race. Well, here we go. You guys know who I'm rooting for, and it's just all still about execution. You got to hit all the right steps, no matter what position you're in. Reddick Byron. Bush Truex, Suarez McDowell. Back to green. Gotta stay in line at the start finish line. Here we go. Big push from the inside. McDowell oh, sends boom, it on the outside. Huge dive. They're in the Reddick underneath it. of him. Around right. goes Truex. He's not clear just yet. Look at Chastain. Where'd he come from? 45 is not clear. He's going to have to race the eight side by side through the S's. A lot of give and take, a lot of room between these two. That is great. Pushing wide, clear. Got 200 cars running 3 4. Yep, Bowman and Byron contact as they battle for third. Chastain in fifth. McDowell sixth. William missed. Reddick is clear. My heart rate through the roof. I know his is. Hopefully everybody got cleared up in turn one. Yeah, Truex is the. He was the one that uh, got spun around up there. That's too bad. He had a good day going. Huge dive bombs. Yep. This corner can have the same thing as turn one. Oh, another he, spinner. Taylor. He's able to continue on. 
Here we are down the back straightaway. I'm not saying anything else. <laughs> Turn 12 is another zone for people to dive in there. Still driving away. Got another one around. Just has to get around here to the white flag. Not many corners left. Well, there goes McDowell. Another one around. Yep. <laughs> Got turned around by Cindric, it looks like. Kyle Bush trying to hold off Bowman. Three wide there, crunch, crunch. Oh my gosh. What am and I the at? caution is out. For what? Oh, yellow, all full course. Set oh, down. Probably debris out there again. The tire off Daniel Suarez shredded all over the racetrack. And uh, we had a couple more cars, including Christopher Bell, spin around. So we'll re rack and try it again. Well, oh, Kim hey. Raikkonen okay. caught up in it. Oh, no. Suarez was the top of the hill. He got. Door slammed at the top of the hill. Hey, the respect you were talking about, Chase, it gone. Yeah, it's out the window now, huh? I was I was thinking Tyler was going to get off the hook, but I don't think. Uh, obviously, it's not over yet. Yeah, hated hated to see some of that, but you know these things are just they get so aggressive at the end of these things, and when you continue to have opportunities at, at green white checker after green white checker, and guys are getting in positions. It's uh, it's tough. I mean, I thought I thought he had a great launch. He did it all right, and now he's got to do it again. Now watch Truex there. Oh, Suarez got into it. Yeah, Bowman put it in there. Then Suarez. Yep. Yeah, it's a chain reaction from the inside. That's pretty aggressive by Bowman. I'm gonna say he was on the inside. Everybody started breaking, and his yep. car hadn't slowed down yet. It wasn't cars on the outside of him. And he wasn't gonna make it. And look, Chastain put him right, put himself right back into the race here. It's pretty wild. You know, it used to be like nose bumper, nose bumper. Now it's door, 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 door. Truex, my nose business, and he gets blocked. Bowman in the Suarez in the Truex. <laughs> but Chastain was right there on the inside of him. from Daniel Suarez. And Ryan Blaney, or excuse me, Martin Truex. See, he's right on edge and doing, staying just off the 24 and then gets clobbered. Nothing you can do, mm -mm. too bad. This was later in the lap uh, for Ryan Blaney. He's got company on the inside and gets turned. Cody Ware was on him right there. Turek's rolling hey, again, I'm but he's... I'm curious oh. what happened on that one. I've overshot it for sure. And Kyle, someone got ran into Kyle there. Yeah, overshot it, overshot it, the 99 ran into the 8, and then he got wrecked from behind. Yeah, on this one, I, you better be glad you overshot it. Yeah. If you don't overshoot it, you're in it. Yeah, I mean, look where he'd have been back there with the 8, which had the 48 under him, almost turned. It was it was like your brother, Kyle, saw them coming and, and gassed it up a little bit to get to the door of Reddick. That was so close for Kyle, almost got turned around himself. Yeah, you're, you're trying to do all you can to stay off the guy in front of you if you haven't made a, a move to the inside yet. And then then you like look in the mirror and double check to see if you're gonna get clobbered. There's so much going on in that short amount of space. So look at that blue car of Ross Chastain. 11 laps ago, he was 28th. And here he is in the top five. And so I was back there now. He was in the top three. Yeah. Well, if he wins again, he could take another watermelon up to the 275 foot tower and splat a couple. That's cool. I, I went and visited Chastain's family farm when we were teammates at Ganassi. Got to see you know, where he grew up, got to meet his family, and just learn about him. So he was going to be my teammate for a few years. And, you know, just a humble kid that was a farmer. 
and the way their whole family's been all these generations, they just work their tails off, and you can see that in his driving style. He's a blue-collar kid that just has to muscle his way through things right now. Uh, that story sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? That's what I'm kind of saying. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta work your way up hard. And yeah. I mean, my family, we didn't have a lot of money. My dad taught me how to go to the gas station and mount and dismount my own race tires so that we could save five bucks per tire when we were going to the racetrack. Sure. That, it's, it's the little things like that uh, make you who you are. How about Jordan Taylor up to 10th place in all of this? Our leading uh, road course ringer. I like it. <laughs> he's able to find some good luck and he's able to find some patterns maybe. Jensen Button into the top 20. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen had a bit of damage there, got spun back to 24. And Fox has some really huge races coming up on the schedule you'll want to make note of, beginning with the Bristol Dirt Race on Easter Sunday evening, April 9th. We're on the high banks of Talladega on Fox, April 23rd. And, of course, Stock Car Racing's longest night, the Coca-Cola 600, Sunday, May 28th. NASCAR continues next week at Richmond on FS1. But first, we have a race to finish. And correct me if I'm wrong, this is our third attempt. It is. At a green-white checker. So this is it. This will be the final moment of shenanigans that are going to happen. No, 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 going? no, no. Unlimited was... attempts. Where did unlimited says. come from? Uh, Have I been out of the car that long? It came from wanting to see these races finish under green. You getting tired, Kurt? My goodness. I was just like, how many more bullets is, uh, does Reddit need to, to dodge? I could tell you, <laughs> he is poor Billy Scott, so close to this win. Nerve wracking to say the least. So Larry, we've had a lot of caution laps, but is, is fuel even a concern for some of these cars like Kyle Busch who is off cycle uh, with the rest of these leaders for winning with last pitted. Yeah, he pitted on lap 53, but that was what, about 17 cautions ago, I think. So uh, yeah, ca caution laps that we've run so many, Mike, I, I don't think, I don't see that a concern even on him. Okay. Man, kind of goes back, to, you know, the, the debris caution for the dirt on the racetrack. We'll have to go back and look at that. It sure has changed the perspective of, of this racetrack or this race. Um, you know, I don't know. That's there's an opinion there. There'll be a lot of podcasts, a lot of stuff discussed next week about it. Um, you know, you see a lot of these road courses over the years that, that have that. I've experienced them and I've seen it on both ways. I've seen them throw debris cautions, I've seen them let it go. So uh, Ryan Priest checked and released at the care center. He had so much damage to his car. They Gave him that mandatory trip. He will be the eighth car out of the race. That leaves us 30 cars, all of which are on the lead lap as we go to overtime for the third time. Alex Bowman was in a position to win this. He was leading when those three leaders got together on the last lap here last year. Will he have anything for Tyler Reddick? I like the eight, though. Kurt, your brother, chose right where he was at. Another good one. Yeah, this is interesting because we had Chastain and Bowman both back up in the same spot they were last year and a couple new guys. Well, I mean, Reddick won two road courses last year. It, it's again, it's any guy's game and it's just how you pull off turn one and how you settle in through the S's. But this is all down towards turn 19 where all this went down right here. One guy in third hit second leader. See ya. Third place car wins. And did you notice who they dispatched on the restart? The eight was Tyler Reddick last year. Right. I mean, at the end of the day here, the, the thing that a bunch of these guys can take away from this, especially the 45, the 24, the speed they've had all day, the execution, and then there's these things that somewhat get out of your control. But Billy Scott, he's as calm as, as I've ever seen a crew chief be. We nope. need him at his best. Want to take home a trophy. That's what I want to take home. Of course, we want to take the home the trophy. Here we go. My goodness, how many restarts are there? <laughs> as many as it takes. Austin Sindrick back up in the top 10. Gilliland, Briscoe, and Gibbs. Here we go. One more time. A little contact in the zone. What's the 48 going to do? Reddick's got plenty of room behind him, and he's got to get the car to cut. He's clear. And Bowman's got tapped from behind. Now he's really clear. Most everybody 
is probably done wrecking back there. Uh, Stenhouse uh, got turned sideways. Don't know if he went around. My goodness. Ten car, a lot of damage here. Yep. Here we go. Bowman's close enough. It's a new guy, right? Now, Reddick has had to deal with Bo Byron. He's had to deal with Kyle Busch. He's had to deal with Chastain. And this is a new one now, Bowman. Pretty amazing. Same as last year. Same two cars, two of the three, that is. He's almost close enough for a bonsai. Well, that's what Oh, no. Uh-oh. That car's tore up bad. A lot of front end damage. Oh, my gosh. We'll see if they get going. <laughs> I don't know if they will. 45 is clear. I mean, that's wow, what a launch. Oh, Christopher Bell all torn up. Trying to make it back around. Yeah, we're we'll just trying to get it to the outskirts of the track. They're racing still back here. Stenhouse into the top 10. Kyle Busch having a look on Bowman. He's got the inside. How and about that? Chastain trying. And now those guys are going to be side by side all through this next section. It's going to slow them up big time. That'll allow Reddick to get away. Point, point. <laughs> there it is. Now well, it's bumper tag. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I think he's going to get around this time, Kurt. It's not up to, to Reddick. It's the other guys not spinning around and throwing trash on the track. But maybe we'll run out of cars eventually. I think you're through. The tough parts of the racetrack, those straightaways and stuff like that, I think he makes it around. He's got the lead he needs. This is the final corner to come back around and take the white. Now you got a driver. Give me one more. White clean. flag, one lap to go. Next flag ends the race. Kyle Busch and Bowman for second. And they're going to have company. That is a beautiful thing, though, for Tyler Reddick and that 45, guys. It's amazing, 23-11, and how fast we're growing and how, how much we're doing together. It's forward together on this program, and it brings, brings me a little bit to be choked up. I was hoping to be back in that car, but it's in good hands. And it's a great team, and I love racing with those guys. Reddick running away, second still in doubt. Bowman looking outside for second. And Byron trying to mount a run on Chastain. What a job. Reddick has done today, right, Mike? I mean, have you seen that on a road course in a while? He's led 40 of the 74 laps. He and William Byron put on quite a show and dominated. But Reddick in the breaking zones had the measure of Byron and everybody else today. He was so fast, he pitted an extra time and still won this race. Still put himself in position. The speed in this car, the job they did, Billy Scott and company, and that kid behind the wheel, pretty impressive. That is a big nugget to remember, is that they were off sequence, and Billy Scott's like, we have speed, I'm putting you back in with the group, let's take our, our lumps now. And now they're there. here they are. And through holding these guys off of so many attempts at these restarts, so close, and then the caution comes out, heck, you can't help but to, to root for him. Through 19. Tyler Reddick, a two-time winner on the road courses of the Cup Series last year. Finished top 10 in both Coda races. Pressure here, we're back to the line. Three of his four wins come on the road course. Tyler Reddick, Masters Circuit of the Americas. That's my boy. That's my boy. Hey, that is a monster win, buddy. Thank you. That <laughs> Billy Scott, yeah, the nerves in him. What a what an experience. What a last 20 minutes that that man went through. Kyle Busch 1.4 seconds back. Alex Bowman 2.3. Chastain and Byron the top five. Ricky Stenhouse, nice drive up into the top 10 behind Austin Sindrick. And Busher Gibbs and Todd Gilliland worked his way up into the top 10 
on the, uh, I think, third to last restart. Great finish for Todd Gilliland, 10th place, top 10. LaJoy, 11th place. Got to be there at the end of these things. I couldn't be any happier for that group at 23-11. I mean, just everyone that pulls together there, everyone will say that they'll push the credit and who works harder to the other person that's around them. It's a really good team unity between the two cars. This kid's gonna be excited when he gets out of this car. He's just as excited as the team. Started off rough. First three races, you knew the speed was there. You put that kid in that car. It was a tough go. They found their, their rhythm. Well, before we get down there to celebrate, we want to thank Chase Elliott for uh, joining us today on the call. Uh, hope you had some fun today. Not as much fun as being here, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you back at the track soon. Yeah, looking forward to being back. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, congratulations to Tyler and, and everybody at 2311. He did a great job. He was tested many, many times there at the end and continued to, to pull through. So congratulations to them. Thank you guys so much for having me and uh, looking forward to seeing you all back at the track. All right, thanks for being with us. Chase Elliott recuperating in Colorado. So Reddick wins for Toyota. Kyle Busch, the first Chevrolet in second, and Austin Sindrick, to no one's surprise, the first Ford today, finishing sixth. Careful on the burn it down comment, right? We had a truck light up the other day. <laughs> what was that, Larry Mack? Jump on in, bud. Yeah, third driver to win in the 45 car in less than a year. That's Billy Scott. Let him off. But he got the jump that he needed. There was that little contact that might have got the 48 off guard a little bit. But right here, he's able to make the cut and not get hit from behind. He did it perfect. It was a masterful job. He held that 48 out just enough, gave the eight a window. But he got up in there deep enough that uh, he was smooth sailing. The eight was blocking the other two, and that was that was the difference, man. Off that the, that off. was a little bit of sprinkle of, of the eight, maybe giving him that extra bit of room and racing him clean. Just listen how hard he gets on the brakes. You know, Kyle Busch gave him so much room going into the corner that Kyle got punted from behind. Yeah, he did end up yeah. losing a couple you know, little spots, but he was able to gain him back. Kyle finished second. Aww. That's their old boy's first time in victory lane, maybe? He's old enough. He was old enough. He was around last year. Yeah, but uh, Potter's last win was at Kansas uh, last September. 13 races ago. He's done a burnout about every turn. <laughs> there can't be, can't be much tire left on that thing. I don't think Denny Hamlin cares. I don't think MJ cares. Oh. That's a family photo. Yep. Yeah. That's my point. <laughs> hands, hands the young fellow over the wall. And over the car. How about that? Let's go, boy. Yeah, buddy. You got so much faith in you. Hell of a job. Way to go. Hell of a job. There's the best one of all. Looks like he could go a couple more restarts. What do you think, Regan? He might be able to do a couple more restarts, Mike. I'm not sure that he wants to, though. Tyler, you had to overcome three restarts at the end of that race, multiple restarts, different pit strategies throughout the course of the day. When it was all said and done, though, this car was just flat out fast. What does this one mean? It means the world. Um, 
Yeah, this, this whole 2311 team's been working so hard all winter long to, to make the road course program better. I was extremely motivated to come in here and, sorry, I gotta take this thing out, uh, and improve that performance too. So just so proud of this Monster Energy Toyota Camry TRD. I mean, this whole team, Toyota, everybody, all the resources, everything they've been putting into this to help turn around the road course program means a lot. I'm Brad, I'm out of, I'm out of gas, but uh, I feel a little bit better with Monster Energy. Tyler Reddick, your winner in Circuit of the Americas. And Kyle Busch brings it home second today. You guys had that strategy, got that track position there, and then three overtime restarts. What did you need, Kyle, just to hold off Tyler, and, and you get one spot better? Yeah, I don't know if we could have, even if we were on equal tires. I mean, when we tested here, they were lights out and had us beat on the front side of the runs. We needed longer runs, but even today, for some reason, we just didn't have the really great long run speed. We had good middle run speed, but overall, um, you know, for as much as effort and everything that we've put into coming here and, and focusing on this place and all the testing and everything that we've been able to do over the offseason. We come out here with a really good finish. So, you know, um, Tyler's obviously a really good road racer. I mean, he proved it driving this car here last year and I was able to get in it and, and run right back to him. So I've been trying to emulate the things that he did and in order to make this car fast last year and just not quite all the way there. But um, they had a whale of a car and I want to thank NetSpin for, for being on our on our car here this weekend in Austin, hometown partner for us right here in, in Austin, Texas. And so uh, excited to get them a runner-up finish. Thanks, Kyle. Well done. Mike? Kyle Busch finishes second to Tyler Reddick, who dominates in Austin, Texas. Restart after restart, Reddick held everybody at bay to score his first win of the season. We'll be checking in in Charlotte in the studio right after this. In his first season with 2311 Racing, Tyler Reddick, it took him six races to drive that 45 to victory lane at Coda, doing it in dominant fashion, surviving three overtime finishes. What a day it was for that team. What a day it was for Tyler Reddick. At just 27 years old, it is his fourth career win, third win in the last five road courses, and as I said, led 41 laps on his way to his first victory with his new team. Hi, everyone, Shannon, Larry, and Jamie. Listen, a couple of weeks ago, you were ready to give him a hug, and, and you may have given him a hug because of the way his season started, and you just talk about what he was able to go out and do today. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't say that was a total surprise what we saw today. I mean, we saw it in practice on Friday. We saw it in his first round of qualifying. He just didn't get what he was looking for, sat on the outside of the front row. But, I mean, this guy has become one of our top road racers. I mean, when you think about winning two of the six last year yeah. and now starting this year off with the win. Well, and with two different cars, right, in, in, in 2311 and also at RCR, and I know it's going to show that he led 41 laps today, but he, he should have led basically almost all of them. They had to pit one extra time, got a little bit off strategy. But to me, the most amazing thing that he did today was all of the restarts at mm. the end, to be able to hold those guys off. And it, it's one thing to do it once, twice, three times. They just kept throwing it at him, and his car was so fast. If he could get through turn one, he was gone by the time they got through the S's. And you saw how excited he was when he climbed out of the car, but then when the adrenaline started to wear off, you could really see uh, how those three uh, overtime restarts may have affected him. All right, let's hear from some of the other finishers out there today, starting with the third place finisher who's with Jamie Little. Great effort by Alex Bowman. Brings it home third for your second top five here, but you could tell how whipped you are and how all the drivers, how difficult was this one today? It probably wouldn't have been that bad if my interior stuff worked. Um, when this uh, cool shirt doesn't work, it just heat soaks and kind of cooks you. So um, I'm hot. It, it stopped working pretty early, but um, you know, I don't have issues with stuff from Hendrick Motorsports very often. So shout out to all the guys back at the shop and this road crew. Um, I'm not the greatest road course racer. So to come run top five here again means a lot. Um, was a hot day. Proud of the 45. He's a heck of a road course racer and the, the fastest car definitely won today. Um, wish our ally Camaro was a couple spots better, but uh, all in all, a good day for us. I saw you and Suarez, the 99, have words afterwards. What were you guys saying? Yeah, he just thought I drove in and tried to drive through him. And I mean, the one I had the corner made, the only reason I was inside of the 99 was to protect from the one. Um, and then the one just hammered me, getting in the corner, dumped me, and then I ran into the 99 and kind of cleaned him out. So um, 
Daniel and I, we've been teammates in the past. We've raced together a long time. Um, I respect the hell out of him. I'm sure he's still not super happy, but um, just try to explain that, that I wouldn't race him like that and, and um, that I was shoved in there. You see that a lot at these road courses. Like Indy last year, Harvick was super mad at me and crashed me. And then he watched the video and he's like, man, I crashed the wrong guy. So um, sometimes just it's a chain reaction, but um, fortunately it worked out for us and uh, ended up with a top five. Thank Ross you. Chastain, somehow at the end of this race, you come through to get fourth. Talk me through the end of that race. So at one point it seemed like you were about 25th place and you find your way up to the front. Yeah, when we got spun, I think we restarted down at Nice Equipment south of town. So to come back to a top five, it was an incredible effort for our Worldwide Express team, Regan, to... Uh, I thought we were a top five car all day, though. I thought uh, Tyler and those guys, the 45, had, had us covered, but there was a line of Chevy second through sixth, and it was just kind of about positioning each other um, while we were saving fuel and then racing each other uh, was, was just whoever was in front was going to be pretty good. So uh, another top five here. Um, I love this place, and I love road course racing, but the, the fight to get better never stops. I know there's things I could be doing better. So uh, for everybody at Jockey, the Moose, uh, Advent Health, and uh, everybody at Track House, Justin Mark's birthday this weekend. We ended up with a good finish. It wasn't the prettiest. Thanks, Ross. And happy birthday to Justin Marks for sure. I want to talk about uh, Alex Bowman because he said, hey, I'm not really that great of a road course racer, but he has two top tens at Coda before this top five finish. Yeah, I mean, two top three finishes yeah, because yeah. he finished mm -hmm. second last year. And, and you think about this, he's working without Blake Harris, but he's back with Greg Ives that was with him last year when he finished second, but now back on top tens because remember the first four races of this year, top tens did not get one in Atlanta. And now he's back with a top 10. That's five in the first six races. All right. We've heard from four of the top five finishers. Let's round out that top five. Uh, the fifth place finisher is with Regan Smith. Well, William Byron ends up in fifth today. Certainly doesn't tell the whole story of the race, though. You and Tyler Reddick having a heck of a battle throughout most of this race. That was fun to watch. Yeah, it was it was really fun. You know, Tyler's great at the – they were great all weekend. Tyler's been great at the road courses, and uh, we made it a battle for sure. Every time crossovers, uh, outbreaking each other, that was, that was a lot of fun. I hate that it kind of got down to restarts at the end. I just – I got shoved off one time in second, and – just uh, we needed we needed a top five and and uh, probably probably could have done some things different, but overall good day for the Liberty University Chevrolet and um, yeah good speed. I mean just Tyler was so fast all weekend, so felt like I was just when I got the lead I was just slipping and sliding, so uh, it was fun. Thanks, William. I'll tell you what, Jamie, William Byron has just been strong all season long as we take a look at, I mean, we talked so about cool. how tired he was, you know, <laughs> look at sit that. down. Sit down, Dad. Here's the flag. I'll hold yeah. it. Byron did a great job, though. First top five for him on a road course. Uh, solid day. I think if he could go back, he'd like to redo that restart where he chose the outside and not behind Tyler There's Reddick. your Christmas card right there, Tyler Reddick, sitting on the ground. Congratulations to him. We will be right back. Tyler Reddick is the man on the road course getting it done out in Coda today. His first win of the season. It is a it was a warm day. He had to survive all of those overtime restarts. But in the end, the 45 heads to victory lane. Let's head up to the booth and hear from the guys who called the race, get their final thoughts. Mike Joy, it's all yours. At Circuit of the Americas, it was a two-horse race. All the trouble was there were 37 over the horses and they all wanted in at least on one or more of those restarts. Unbelievable, man. Calamity Hill up there. What'd you call it? A log jam? Log jam city up there in turn one. It was all about that. And then the job that Tyler Reddick did. Masterful job time and time again. Getting a good launch and doing a good job at the top of the hill, Kurt. I'm just proud of the team at 2311 and all the execution through those restarts. I mean, it is like a land rush start all the way up that hill. And so I'm real proud of that group to pick up a W. Gunter, do you enjoy the show? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It was uh, enjoyable, and I think uh, the best team and the best driver won today. And uh, all the weekend, thanks to you. Thanks, uh, Clint. Thanks, Cole, thank for you. having me. Appreciate thank you. It. Thanks for being with us. Calamity and crashes and restart after restart. Tyler Reddick was the best thing in Texas today. Thank you so much, Mike. All right, listen, our first road course is, is in that rear view. What was your biggest takeaway from today? That the players we expected to be up there, that's the ones that were there. Because you think about Tyler Reddick and William Byron, they combined led 69 of the 75 laps. That was even through the cycle of green flag pit stops. Yeah, and I would say the guy that we had on the broadcast as well, Chase Elliott, can't wait to get back. He's oh, been yeah. kind of our road course guy. And it was pretty cool to have him be a part of the show. I thought he added a lot to it, and I was glad that he stayed through the majority yeah. of the race. Yeah, thank you so much, mm -hmm. Chase, for joining us on our broadcast. Of course, 
course, next Sunday, we're going to head out to Richmond Raceway. Coverage begins at 2 Eastern on FS1. And don't forget, we've got NASCAR Race Hub weeknights at 6 Eastern. Larry and Jamie will be on tomorrow. Yes, we will. Uh, Brad Keselowski on Tuesday. Clint Boyer is going to join the show on Wednesday. And tonight on Fox, it's Next Level Chef followed by The Simpsons. Congratulations to Tyler Reddick, winner at Circuit of the Americas. Thanks for hanging, us, hanging with us today. Have a great night.